Radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Howdy, Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time, time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop tickets for less.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. A crossover is. Crossover dribble. Sing for the crossover. crossover. Kyrie Irving. Crossover in the lane. One of the most famous crossovers of all time. Behind the back, an ankle breaker on Chris Paul. Crossover. 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 All right, time for the crossover. It's brought to you by Everlittle Concrete Repair in Omaha at everlittleconcreterepair.com. Hi, boys. Hey, oh. Hello, um, hello. Let's, let's talk about if, if by chance Channel 3 had anybody manning the switchboard at 1030 last night. It's a tough night for them. Now, I don't come to realize that I don't think it was specifically KMTV's fault. Because it seemed to, that everyone fall, fell victim to the 10.30 cutoff of uh, the Billy Joel concert last night, which I watched with, with, uh, with great pleasure. I enjoyed it as well. It was awesome. Uh, it was awesome. So, Thank you, Josh. I, I would not would not have known about it. You would have that. never known. No, I really wouldn't have. I wouldn't he he it's brought like it up advertised it. He brought it up for me on uh, what to watch on Friday, and I said, oh, my God. You know what? You're right, because... Um, they didn't really advertise it much during the Masters, those little brief like breaks they have early no. in the coverage. Um, so it made MSG look great. MSG does so not good. look that nice. But not everybody in the country uh, lost the last 13 seconds of Piano Man. In Terre Haute, in their market, they finished it and then went into the news. Then on the West Coast, it was fixed. Oh, really? Yeah, but... Almost everywhere else across the country, yeah, it got cut off because why just Terre Haute? CBS? Why did Terre Haute figure CBS, out? <laughs> there must be ten thirty and something triggers, and it immediately goes into uh, that's what it seemed like to news. But as you're like here, because I saw your reaction, and I was kind of the same way. I was like, "Ooh, someone punched the wrong button." How many people called the channel? I mean, they were clearly winding down. There was like probably two minutes left yes. in the whole deal, but they it was the crescendo of the whole thing. I was waiting for sting to come back out and say something or jerry seinfeld say another thing jerry seinfeld got up there and didn't even do a joke the entire time mm. he, just, he just stood there there's some bail the banner a hundred uh yeah you know here's boom. billy joel uh, what's the deal with what, billy joel? what a guy what a guy what a concert last night that's, that's my favorite uh that's my favorite guy my i favorite wish they would have done it live yeah. i wish they would have done it commercial free and oh it was not commercial free oh yeah. it was not it was commercial oh. Filled. Well, also, it was if you go back to the playlist a month ago on that show, they kind of went all over the map. Yeah. On where they play songs. And so I can't remember what did you go to the concert when he was in Lincoln? No, I did not. Did, so I don't, you don't care about Billy Joel. Well, no, actually, I, I, okay. I was telling Gary earlier, I, I'm not, I don't celebrate his entire catalog the way you do, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I did see him and Elton John. It, I want to say it was 2012. Oh, doing pianos. Yeah, it was amazing. That's cool. That, that was. Out of the concerts, it was it was gifted to me. I can only imagine what those those tickets probably cost. It was without question one of the best experiences I've had. So I can't awesome. I can't remember how he closed the one in Lincoln. I assume it's a pretty similar set list. Just whenever he does any shows, 
Um, but if I were Billy Joel, I would do Piano Man. Yeah. Act like I'm finishing the concert. Encore is scenes from an Italian restaurant. But he, they came back from a break and they did scenes from an Italian restaurant. I was like, well, they're just they're just going for it. So maybe, I think it was out of order. So how long did it go? Well, I mean, it started at commercials. It started at eight thirty. Yeah. Um, which ten thirty. I mean, CBS had the graphic out that was like eight o'clock. So I turned it on at eight o'clock, and guess yeah. what was on? Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a good warm up right there. Tracker was on. I was like, this is going to last the whole half hour. I'm not coming back. Until did you get dialed into that show? And, no, I did not. And that, so I turned it back on about eight twenty seven. I'm like, all right, come on, Tracker. Tracker's getting like, audience. Stay now. tuned. We have new new scenes from. The next episode of Tracker coming up. Sweet. And uh, they couldn't cut that off, though. No, no, they could not. So it started at like 830 and it went till exactly 1030. I would conservatively conservatively guess that 40 minutes of it was commercials. Oh, wow. yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it was like there were very rare. You'd get back to back songs. Yeah. yeah. Only oh, right at the wow. start. I'm pretty sure only right at the start. They did. Uh, they did back to back songs. And they did, he did Miami 2017 in my life right off the bat. Miami 2017 is a great song to start the concert. They see the lights go out on Broadway. And it was like New York and we're all here. It was great. It was awesome. This guy loves Billy Joel. I do. do. I do. love Billy great. Joel. Yeah. I love Billy Joel. Because he, he he talked about it during his concert. Like it's, it's um, and I think Seinfeld mentioned it too. It's New York. Yes. It's the whole thing. And you get the whole, I, like, it's, it's perfect for him to do those shows at MSG. Is that Gronkowski? Oh, he just spiked his Patriots first pitch. Day. Wow. Drunk. Jeez, Living a dream. I do like how they rock the, bo- the Boston uniforms. Um, like the, the ones that say Boston on oh, the front. Yeah. That they wore after the, the bombing. Day. Yeah. This is our bleeping CD. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Big Poppy. Stay but strong. also, the other big pop culture event that we had over the weekend was, of course, Saturday Night Live. Oh my! What a show! Oh um, my! So Gosling, the Beavis and Butthead. Oh, I no. if there's two people in pop culture that I love, it's Billy Joel and Ryan Gosling. Hey, and it was just the, a great weekend. For so me. the opener, which is a recreation of a skit that's been done in the past, that was hilarious. Uh huh. Kate McKinnon, I don't know how she held it together because everybody else was cracking, and they tried like Ryan Gosling kept looking down. Yeah. You know, like the famous one of uh, Chris Farley with Spade. Yeah, and where you know, man down by the van van down down by the the river river, and everybody loses it. Yeah. Like they were losing it and they were just looking down. Gosling. He can't keep it together. No matter what. He looked like he was having fun, but the Beavis and butthead. Yeah. One. (laughs) Mike is butthead where Heidi Gardner. It is the perfect. Just started laughing. And she basically had to tell them to stop in the middle of the sketch. (laughs) The perfect SNL sketch because it makes no sense. You have a very famous movie star who is dressed up like Beavis. And then Mike Day. And you have nonstop laughter the entire time by the (laughs) by the people who are actually trying to act in it. I mean, it's like it like if you if you had a mad lib, lib, if you had a a script for it. That is the perfect <laughs> SNL sketch. So Caitlin Clark shows up, but have you heard the story now post her appearance that it was not supposed to be her? So they did oh. the rehearsal, and Michael Che, he was like Heidi, Heidi Gardner was supposed to be dressed as Caitlin Clark. Oh, they were going to do fake so, Caitlin Clark. Oh. So they didn't tell him that. That's until fun. out, That's of, the why corner, he out so of the corner of his it. eye, as they were starting, he sees her come up to the like the edge oh, with a producer. I didn't hear uh-huh. that. <laughs> and so there's a he was he apparently said this to like at the one of their after parties that he when he gets when he gets the next story, he pauses yeah. because he sees her and he's like, what's going on? Is she just going to watch the sketch? Yeah. So when she slid in, he got really, really uncomfortable. He did. He did. And then the joke that they didn't the audience didn't know that she was there when he did the first joke, which was the WNBA draft is is whatever and and the joke was she should have an apron or something yes. like that and it bombed completely <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, nobody laughed everyone said "Ooh," and then yeah. it, it was like now to talk about it here's caitlin clark yeah. and it was really caitlin clark that's <laughs> really her they took, and she they, was not wearing a nebraska they, jacket no, she was grow not, up not. grow yeah, up yeah. are it you looked sure like a, it looked like a nebraska whoa, jacket. Whoa. grow up it was nike, a black shirt nike may have trolled iowa yep grow up it was a Nebraska Letterman's jacket. Why would she be wearing a Nebraska jacket? Black shirts. A blacked out Nebraska jacket. Sue left it behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was that was that was an intimidating Nebraska you know, uh, Letterman's jacket. So that jacket, jacket that she was wearing, 
Yeah, it costs six hundred dollars. Oh, I bet. I bet it does. You can go on the Nike website and get. Uh, hello. Does that mean Nebraska's not for me? Are they transitioning into from Adidas to Nike? Maybe that's that, that, maybe that was that's about? what it means. Yeah. Yes. I think we're getting leaks here. Will uh, tonight during the draft, is she wearing Nike apparel or is she dressed like she was when she got the Naismith Award with Edie the other day? I think you got to dress I feel up like a she, little yeah, bit. Yeah, right? yeah. I, th- yeah. I think she's dressed up. She's been doing the the car wash here in the last couple of days with all the sit downs, and she's yeah, she's dressed up. But I like how she's taking all her teammates with her. Yeah, I did at, see she had them at, at the, at the end of out. SNL. It's like, oh, there's yeah. Kate Martin. There's Gabby Marshall. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, that's the whole Iowa basketball team. This is awesome. Good job by her. She's done it right. All right. Now the other big story of the weekend. We have to have a poll here. This may end up as a Josh poll. Okay. Um, let's rank the best sports TV beers. What does that mean? So the beer that you have while you're watching the Masters. Oh, or yeah. Or no. you can even say the beer you have on the 19th hole with buddies. <laughs> Where does that rank? So I'll give you some options. Oh, I got you have, you have the 230 college football beer, middle of the day. Yeah. You've gotten through the first round of college games. You crack open a beer. That tastes really, really good. It's mm-hmm. good, but it's not okay. on my top three. The Masters beer. Sure. It's a good one. You've got the first day of the NCAA tournament beer. Yep. That's a that's probably up that's there. That's top for me. three. I think it's the best, beer. one of the best sports TV beers is that first beer on Thanksgiving when you watch that. 11 a.m. Does it have to be sports TV beers or can it just be sports beers? It can be a mixture. All right. Well, I would say just ballpark beer in general. Yep. Ballpark yeah, the, beer. First, the, the first ballpark beer. You, first whether, ballpark beer. Whether you go to your seat. Actually, the second one. Or you go better. right away and then you take it to your seat. No, no, the no. First you ha- one. Yeah, you have to go to the seat. Yeah, just to see. See the seat. See the seat, yeah. Just like you go to the airport and you see yep. the gate yep. and you're like, oh, I have two you're more like, hours. Here's where I'm at. Yeah. Where's, okay, okay yeah. what are my yeah. options near me? Yeah. Now I'm going. Now, now though that beer that comes from a vendor in the stands and so the one you get your arse up to go get yeah tastes pretty damn good it, when they pass it down the road man it's been a while since i had a vendor beer i yeah. agree i got to yeah. i got to go back to i don't know like a i think Hell, Rex Grossman might have still been the quarterback of Chicago <laughs> when I went. <laughs> I mean, it's how you can't keep track of time. It's been a while. That was in the Rex Grossman era, yeah. I think. Like but the last beer, and I, you got, I was no, I can't. I can't remember the last time I bought a beer from a vendor. Like actually walking down the yeah, aisle. Beer here, beer here. I, I haven't heard from that hey, guy in a they while. They can be your best friends if you're there to drink and enjoy a little ball. Once you start hooking them up and you start tipping them, they're coming back to you on a regular basis. If you do, but I mean. The sitting in the chairs where they come and serve you yeah. is pretty special. And then they open yeah. the can up with like a can opener. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, that's, right. that's pretty special. Let's stuff. go. You pay, I mean, there is the great American thing that you learn as a little kid that you're not supposed to keep the money when you have to pass the money down the row for a hot dog or a beer. Oh, yeah. Kids and, will never and know. You don't, you don't understand how that works as people are passing the money down. Yeah. And you're like, you just keep it. And everybody just stares at you. <laughs> and you just be like, yeah, but it's you, a man. joke. It's like, you, you fake like you're sticking it in your pocket and then you continue to pass it down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you look at I mean, you, go to, you build camaraderie. When If you ever went to the, the Metrodome and you got a beer from Wally the Beerman. Yeah. No smoking. No smoking. No smoking. Uh, first beer on dollar beer night. Uh, Probably not as good. Yeah, it's but you're immediately onto the second because one. Because yeah, right, that right. first well, one is d- so small. Right. You're double fisting and you're just cranking yeah. that and then you're hopping back in line. You know? I, so maybe I think it's like the eighth beer on I think hundred percent for me is first beer at a hockey game because I tend to overindulge at hockey games because most of the times all hockey my friends, beer is great beer. Hockey beer is a good one. And when I'm doing games at Baxter, I look around, I want one so bad. So whenever yeah. I go to another hockey game somewhere else, I got to make up for last time. The one that I just thought of while looking at uh, these images of, of Fenway Park is uh, the uh, Patriots Day game is about to start. Um, first beer. Is a cask and flag and beer? First beer at a, you're visiting a new major league ballpark for the first time. Yeah. You're like, I got to yep. see, yep. I, I got to see what they're drinking here. What are they all about? What does everyone have? Like that. The or first time it's been a while since what, you've been to a ballpark and you're like, yeah. oh, it's what's their new rotation? Right. When I went to when I went to Camden Yards and I got that first natty bow, and I was like, this beer, I don't even think it's good, but I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's drinking it. I I overhyped the same thing. So Great Lakes Brewing in Cleveland had it you could only get it at a progressive field called the Rally Drum. Yeah. And I I loved it. It was really good. It was a lager. And I was telling my buddy, who's also a big Cleveland fan, when you go, oh, you got to have the rally drums. Like, oh, I've never heard of it. And then he went two months later and he said, eh, it was okay. 
Yeah, but you overhyped. You it. gave it expectations. Like, well, you know a place that I thought the beer would have an impact, like that first beer you you got to go watch Nebraska play at PBA. Nada. Mm -mm. Nothing. When you're just sitting there watching. Probably because they say you're drinking a beer. Like, well, what am I doing? Probably because it got thrown on the floor. Well, people have that reaction when uh, they're at Haymarket Park watching the Huskers <laughs> having that now, first outdoors beer. Is probably a little bit different. Judging, judging by the outdoor amount of beer, people. That's true. This outdoor weekend, beer, though, Maryland's is better. Playing, yeah. Judging by the amount of people that got actually bought beers when PBA started selling beers, um, which was very few. Um, it, I, I can't imagine that it'll actually be that prevalent at Haymarket Park. Like we make a huge deal about yeah. it, but like ten percent of people are interested. You're like, yeah, sure, I guess I'll get a. Beer. Now, do you think that first warm day, like this weekend, so Friday, it's going to get approved, and then Friday night, you should be able to drink. Yeah, okay. but it's going to be chilly. But it's going to be chilly this yeah. weekend. But that first warm, like maybe mm. the following. So the here you go. Is green. Here you go. I got a scenario for you. So the following weekend, I was in town. Spring yep. games going on. You can't drink in the football stadium. You come over to the baseball stadium. It could be a big day for beer sales. You get popped. I I'll say this. Maybe this is a poll question. Does beer taste better when the grass is green? Oh, oh yeah. That lawnmower. Beer. Oh, yeah. yeah first that, that, did, yep. I know you had to go to the Storm Chasers game on Saturday. So I didn't have any lawn But beers. that first beer after the first mow. Yep. Had one on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Tastes a lot different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very good. This is a good list of beers. Kinds of beers. Yep. Beers, beers, and drinking beer. And then there's no question. This would be my like second beer. after the, the hockey beer is the post round beer the post golf round beer yeah that's just that is assuming though that you're already not in trouble by the time you get to the <laughs> true <laughs> true but even if i don't know like yeah because i'll do you, you gotta I'll do cans i'll do cans i'll be doing domestics but if the if the clubhouse say has something good on the tap then i'm gonna get it and i'm gonna get off the tap i'm but, not getting another can but what if you're like like you know there's been some times where by the time you get to hole 19 you're if I'm loaded you've up on been, Fireball. You've been overserved, maybe. <laughs> well, but, yeah. That, it's that just, beer doesn't taste great. No, it doesn't because yeah. you don't even remember it. Right, exactly. But, uh, Chad, the Oriole fan, sends me, he goes, anytime the Orioles win, National Bohemian. Daddy Bo. Daddy Bo. That's a great beer. Okay. Yeah, so. With they, a little uh, Oriole I, I, logo. I went to Camden Yards in like 2015, 16, somewhere around there. And it, shortly after that, they stopped selling that beer at the ballpark at Camden Yards and they've just brought it back this year or within the last couple uh weeks here. So, uh that's a joyous day for all of our friends in Baltimore. Still a natty bow. But they have the the guy the guy with the mustache yeah. right there. Um he's everywhere in the ballpark. He's he is everywhere. At least he was in 20 whatever when I went to the game. Uh Phil says you guys are missing the point on the 19th hole beer. It tastes even better when your wife keeps texting you, wondering where you're at and when you're coming home. 100%. It yep. gets better. <laughs> yes, it does. Because you realize you make it last a lot longer. Because <laughs> once you got the the home life pulling you back away from you know four or five hours with the boys, you're like, okay, I got to milk this thing. Now, here's one beer. Now, here's a beer dies, that it goes down pretty good. That seems out of reach for me, but it's a beer that I want badly. Beer at the Masters. Yeah, a master. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's it's it seems a little out of reach, but yeah. that that's a destination beer. Can't that is, have my phone. I better have a beer. Yep. Yeah, that is my holy grail. And it costs what four bucks or something like that. Well, I want to know. So if I ever am lucky enough to to be picked in the lottery, do can I find anybody who has a digital camera? Because you can bring your cameras and you just can't bring your phones in. But I want to get. I want pictures. Does anybody have a digital camera? I didn't even think about that. You could bring a digital camera. Yeah, you can bring a camera, and you just cannot bring a phone in. Huh. Because you see people at the Masters all the time taking pictures of them. That might be a and worthy investment. Person. I know. Do you think disposable cameras do the trick? I would imagine. Yeah, people are doing disposable cameras <laughs> again. For sure. Well, if, if you win the lottery, you get you have time to figure out your camera. That is true. Yeah, and you got to put a lot of money aside anyway. Why not yeah. throw eighty more bucks on there? Yeah. What, what is a digital cam? What is a digital a digi camera running these I bet, days? I bet you can get it for eighty bucks. Oh, I bet cheaper, right? Because nobody uses yeah, that anymore. It's your, nice. your phone camera's better. It's nice to see the backdrop of fans, and they're all in the moment. Yes, they're not on their phones. Yeah. They're not on their cameras. Um, first one to pop up seventy five bucks. Just a little okay. tip here: if okay. uh, either uh, the three of you are going to get uh, remarried someday and have a uh, reception, <laughs> thanks. Uh, wow, friend of mine. This is about uh, about fifteen years ago. He got married. Uh, great, great dude. Great wedding party. Was glad to be part of it. 
uh, to create memories, they left disposable cameras on the table. Don't do yep. that. Now, uh, yep, my friend. Now, there, did that were, too. there were quite a few of us that were absolutely hammered. Yep. Mm -hmm. There are things you can take a picture of mm -hmm. because they are going to develop those and yep. show them to everybody watching at the same time. Yeah, yep. that's not good. Grandma doesn't need to see that. We, yeah, have, you know, I, uh, I have a really good friend. We haven't stayed in contact since I moved from that part of the country. I mean, good on him. But I didn't need to see that. Yeah. <laughs> we had the uh, great misfortune uh, a year and a half ago of there being a digital camera floating around our holiday party uh, at Energy. I think you were out of town, so you weren't there. Um, but yeah, there I, I've I've seen some of the results of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. Were any of them taken into the bathroom? I don't know. So I don't know. This guy, they're, 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 I bet there were two full cameras where dude just went into the bathroom and messed around. Yeah. So same, same thing <laughs> so as Gary's story. mother in law story. was like, uh, because they showed him, they showed one picture and then he was like, oh, I know what's going on. Yep. At their, like the morning after. Yeah. Yikes. Um, Yikes. We, we, so we were part of the, being in Arizona, so we were at a wedding and my really good friend, who, gosh, they got married back in like 2003. So that was a thing. I think back then that was a thing. A lot of, well, you, you know, you know, these people that was, you'd go to receptions and people would have the disposable cameras. So they had two floaters in the toilet. They had oh. three, uh, I think two or three junk picks. Yikes. Uh, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think someone might've gotten ill and, 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 and someone, and someone captured that as yeah. well. And then, you know, you're, you're reliving your magical because the, the, obviously the intention is for the things that you may have missed and you yes. don't have a videographer, this is your way to relive it. That's right. what you're reliving. The, the, the lesson here is you can't trust anybody. Nope. <laughs> no. Especially, especially, when especially, drink, especially when it's an open bar, especially when it's an open bar yep. and especially your friends. Yep. Those are the worst people. Yep. It, it turns out that your friends are actually the worst people. <laughs> In the entire world. Uh, <laughs> nice catch. Whoa. Oh, he just got robbed. Nice catch. Come on now. Let's go, Boston. Stop. Look at that guy with the with the Nike jersey on. Those are horrendous. Horrible. Yeah, that was yeah. 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 would have yeah. been a home run. He brought that back. That would have been a home run. Uh, Jesse says, how about the first beer on vacation? Now, we're straying away yeah. from sports beers, but that's a great beer. He, he, that is. I mean, that's Definitely. the most. Well, Obviously. Yeah. The, 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 the airport beer when you're going somewhere really awesome. You're not yep. going on like a work trip. You don't even hesitate yeah. when it costs you seven bucks nope. for a little 12 ouncer. Money doesn't matter. Like Cracky McGee's. Let's go. Money is fake. Uh, is beer better at an indoor or outdoor sporting event? Brian asks. Outdoor. Say outdoor. 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 Even though my number one is in indoor for different reasons, outdoor is way better. Yeah. No, I, I tend to agree. But with I that. like where you're going with is does a beer taste better when the grass is greener it does absolutely and it does uh, another poll question up by the way at happer show are your friends actually the worst people <laughs> they are it's good uh he, oh how about this from uh from m m dot uh Shamalot? was was lucky enough to hit the lottery for the masters this year the beer hit different and the crow's nest beer is amazing no one knows where it's brewed but it's served there and yes you will find a, a digital camera quickly after receiving the email. That's, That's the great part of it because the lottery goes out and then they they say who who gets in or who has the yeah. ability to buy tickets several months before. Right. So you can. Yeah, yeah I know. It's then not, you're, start, you're not you're not finding out like the yeah. week before. You're beginning to make the arrangements but, probably in like October. So um, it'll come out in July. I'm pretty sure it's uh, either June or July. You have a month. Yeah. And then you find out shortly thereafter. So I'm zero for ten. And I've gotten to the point now that the one time I'm going to win, I'm going to get Monday tickets. Here, yeah. I so mean, do I, you get I want, to choose want, the day? No, I don't nope. think so. Yeah, you practice round. You are assigned whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever day it is. I would like Thursday through Sunday, but I know that I'll get Monday. Those lucky bastards. And I'll get the day where it's raining. Yeah. And nobody is out on the course. Now, yep. a buddy of mine asked me a question yesterday. Because Tuesday's the day you want. Because if they're doing a practice round, they're doing full eighteen. Because even on Wednesday, yeah. they might do nine. Some guys might do 18, but mostly it's going to be nine. So buddy of mine asked me, um, asked me this question yesterday. He said, um, I was just thinking that your odds, my, my odds or all of our odds by virtue of what we do are probably massively increased from the general population of people because we could potentially say that we are like media or, yeah. and then they go, the media goes into a pool to play yeah yes yep yes we were talking about that last week S 
So we, by virtue of what we do, are, I mean, ha- have a have this like enhanced odds. We're like yeah. four or five times yeah. more likely to actually play there than anyone else. So you remember uh, Teddy Greenstein? Teddy yeah, Greenstein, Chicago Tribune. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chicago Tribune. Go Northwestern. Um, yep. So and now he writes for a betting company. He told the story on air. We had him on and we were talking about the Big Ten. And he used to cover the Masters every year for the trip. And he would he would go, he would travel with his clubs because that Monday, you know, if you get selected, you play right away on Monday morning. He wanted his clubs or he was going to go play somewhere. Like there's a really popular public course in Augusta mm-hmm. yeah. that a lot of people play at. Um, but he got selected like in 2011. Oh my gosh. Um, he said they do not touch the course. The course remains exactly the same as it was when they closed up shop on Sunday, except there's no patrons around. Yeah. But oh. they don't they don't change the flag sticks from Sunday. It's the same spots. <laughs> he said it's unbelievable. Oh man. I can't even imagine. And you're and basically it's just you, the media that were selected are out there. Nobody else. How do you know how many ballpark, how many play? Oh. Like I'd imagine they I don't think it's uh, the his if I remember him telling it correctly, it's not like there's 18 foursomes. Yeah. It might be like, I don't know. Shotgun start. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe <laughs> yeah. like, 40, it's like, well, like, I guess I'm yeah. starting on 16. Maybe <laughs> max 40 people. You're starting on aim in corner. Yeah. Like, oh, I got to do this. I'm going to hit that shot and there's going to be Vern behind that tree. He said, everybody's going to say, in your life. <laughs> in he said, your everybody life. is assigned a caddy. <laughs> oh, 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 my goodness. That's, I'm, I'm not good enough for that. That's just, nope. I wouldn't even know what to do. Maybe Vernon stayed for today's media. Oh, he did, yeah. yeah. You can just on the, the, the he hung out behind that tree. No, Vern the tower Vern's on sixteen. Said, yeah, <laughs> Vern said I didn't get selected. I was I was in the running. They <laughs> didn't select me. Nothing I could do. Uh, Brandon brings up a good one. He says hotel lobby beers as a sports parent. Oh, yeah, different after a long one. day at the ball field. Yeah, I could see that it's lobby slash like hotel. Like you get back, yeah. everyone's absolutely just killed from I've, I've had seven a, baseball games i've had a couple rowdy parent groups when i was coaching that That's good when i got back and they were already starting and they're like hey we got one waiting for you coach i'm like oh hey, do i do it used to be in that world with aau basketball you knew what parents were vets yep because they came loaded mm-hmm. and that friday and saturday night yep just sitting in the lobby cooler the kids are swimming or running around yep. you're like oh yeah yep camped around the cooler it's like the cadillac of coolers and they have it well oh yeah There's speakers and, in yep, there. yep everything is good uh, Josh. Yes, sir. Um, I'm glad that you, uh, got enlightened to what is a trend of, uh, switch. What's up, brother? Uh, sketch sketch. Oh yeah. 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 I told, I told Josh about that. Glad I learned about this human. So have you, yeah. uh, have you seen now more of this over the, over the weekend? I saw an article about sports media is obsessed with what's up, brother. Yeah, <laughs> they are. It's like, oh. they are. I had to watch when Gary brought it up on Friday and I had no clue what he was talking about. Who? I don't, I don't know why I, I opened it's a, up. It's opened a great up. conversation on why things are the way they are. <laughs> what, what, why things become popular. I have no earthly yeah. idea. So I, I don't play enough Madden that I would ever be like, Watching. all of a sudden you end up with this kid and you're playing him on, yeah. on the stream. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. But I opened up TikTok on Wednesday and this was all it was was moments from him and, you know, talking smack and, you know, saying stuff like, you know, how are your mom's milkers? <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> I might be lactose intolerant, but I have an EpiPen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good trash talk. Right yeah. There. Is it, is it good? He, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a that, decent he, trash talk. He is a trash, trash talk. talker, but then yeah. he'll cuss and he'll go, I apologize for cussing. Goes, Sorry for cussing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for he cussing. Goes, um, the one that I saw yesterday was, I'm the reason that they, uh, lock up things at cvs now <laughs> <laughs> i believe he referred to himself Just once on, as the, the, on the the little highlight reel i saw of him he seems like he he's in his element but if you took him out of the gaming world he would be a very awkward and maybe i don't know i've seen a lot of clips of him like meeting famous people okay. and he seems to just be that he just seems like he'd be socially awkward but yeah so what he started at mississippi state uh left yeah went he to went Oklahoma, to several left. schools yeah <laughs> Yeah, se- several colleges and just decided he was better at video games. But now he's having his 15 minutes of him. He likes to go to Twin Peaks because they have cold beer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, guy funny. was interviewing him goes, do you have a girlfriend? He goes, eh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, Quick witted. But, you know, like, look at, like, how, how the Internet gives you your 15 minutes of fame. What was the little uh, Russian kid? 
Oh, um, I know oh, what you're yeah, talking about. What was his name? Who did, uh, who did they? I followed him on Instagram. I it think. wasn't Mac. He hung around with. He them. was in the U.S. for yeah, like six weeks, and he was all over the place. Oh, and who, now you haven't heard from him. Who brought him? Hasbulla. Yes, Hasbulla. Who always hung? Who always had him around? It was Dana White had him around. A lot of people had him it around. Was, I think it was UFC. Yes. Yeah. Whatever happened to Hasbulla? Because he was a big UFC guy. Like no, you have, he was a huge like, UFC fan. He hasn't fan. been anywhere since he left the U.S. Oh wait, are is, you? Is, saying, he, is he still with us? Uh, well. I, I'm just trying. I'm just asking. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. In some upheaval in that part of the world. Yeah. Just where sure. is Hasbula? somebody find Hasbula? Don't know where he is. See, that would be a good show of give like track down. Where are they now after their 15 minutes of fame? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, it could be a good series. Famous YouTube stars of the past. One hit wonders. Where are they now? Yeah. I mean, we've done a lot. There's been a lot of, um, a lot of like, where's William Hung? The guy where is, did, where uh, is William Hung, by the way? Yeah. You could find him. He's got many YouTube uh, documentaries about him. And if you'd like him to come to your minor league ballpark, he'll charge you a lot of money. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But he'll sing the seventh inning stretch for you. Oh, 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 that's good. That might be worth it. That's good. Is she bangs extra? Yeah. She bang. She bang. Afterwards, he, he does a rendition of she bangs. Uh, Todd writes in, he says Wednesday practice rounds, uh, and around lunch as things move toward the part three contest. I've been to Wednesday and Tuesday practice rounds. Uh, love better. both, but par three is a fabulous event. Need that would be, yeah. Notes. If you had Wednesday, you'd be able to see the par three contest. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. I think that'd be awesome. Get to see the family, get those little everything. babies out there yeah. in those caddy in their caddy uniforms. I mean, it's see, really some the, see some of the wives in the caddy uniforms. It's too? it's really cute. Oh yeah, like oh. Ricky, Ricky Fowler's wife. Uh, well, same. people really liked uh, DJ's uh, Kepka's wife. And yeah, child. They like Kepka's wife. They like it's Kepka's okay. wife. You can say it. Yep. Uh, Bubba Watson's daughter appears to be a pretty good golfer. Really? Yes. Not surprised. Was she hitting the par three? She uh, probably she was would taking have fared better than he did this week. Yeah. Nice. Probably nice. should have taken swings for him. Remember when Thursday Bubba Friday. Watson won two green jackets? Yeah. Remember when he hooked sure that did. thing around from the pine straw? Yeah, the pine and straw. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. It's a game changer. Oh my god. I, I I tell you what, we've seen those moments so many times, and and Tiger shot on sixteen out of the rough, and mm -hmm. like. I'll watch it every time. I love it. Yep. I, I love it. every time's like the first time for me. Yep. It's like I will watch the tiger shot with the Vern call every I'll, single time. I'll watch some of the tragic shots too. Oh, the tragic like shots are really 2016 fun. Spieth on 12. Like, <laughs> oh. he, he he basically had like a red carpet <laughs> to win another yes. another jacket. And it's like, oh my God, he just he just lost the Masters right it's there. It's right there for you, buddy. Uh, all right, final one. This might be a poll question, uh, but for everybody, because we all at some point have played golf or have been good at golf, or maybe not. Do you think that you could hold on to a four shot lead on the 18th hole at Augusta? God, no. 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 A four God, shot lead no. On against 18th. professional golfers? No, against professional golfers. Nope. I'd go snap hook and then I'd probably be OB and then hey, I would have a shot. I'd have to shot professional. Lead. Look at what nope. Um, nope. Morikawa did yesterday. Yeah. Like if he would have been in competition there, he shanked that thing over there and then he had to hit it backwards just to get back up. I, I, I truly feel Oberg, though, is. Making it interesting if that ball doesn't take a unfortunate skip into the creek, as opposed to getting the forward kick and getting on the green on yeah. number eleven, he's probably in the mix. Hold on, yeah. somebody that thinks they can land a plane. You don't think you have a four shot lead? No, I know what I know. My limitations. Yeah. I am at the very best okay at golf. I know my sometimes. I know my mental game too. I would be like, oh, see, that's God. the other thing. Yeah. I would even factor that in. And I'm just hands factoring. Are gonna, hands are getting a little shaky. I'm just factoring in oh, the golf part. Yep. The physical and mental limitations would, there, there's no way I'd feel good about that. I mean, it, like, even if I hit two perfect shots and miraculously got on the green, I'd four putt. <laughs> <laughs> there's no chance. Yeah, there's, what, like, there's, I, I was thinking, what about is this rolling at a 13 here? What the hell? Like, what would you, what would you shoot at Augusta? Like, let's just say, you had the best day of your life. Best day of my life at Augusta? Yes. I'm not hitting from the tips, though, right? Sure. You're hitting from regular okay. old, you know. The blues. Yeah, the blues. Yeah. Um, Do they have? I with the group, they have only one set of tea markers there? They might. The, I don't know. During For the like, tournaments. During yeah, the, no, but like when I know, know. people. Play. No, because they have like tiger tees. Like they, um, so they, yeah, they, they shorten it up when it's not the mass. I would say if I was somehow able to break 100, I'd be. Absolutely, absolutely elated. Yes. Yeah. So this I'm like, guys, I shot a 98. 
if you were a media member, because they don't change the course whatsoever, right, yeah. so, that you'd be hitting from the pro. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> taking six putts every time. I can't. <laughs> Like it, there's just it's not happening. But I'm busting out a three wood on a par three. Those yeah. tap ins, I mean, the, those guys like even you know, Chef were on 18 yesterday, mm -hmm. and you know he's got a four shot lead or whatever. And I'm looking at it, he's like, okay, he's probably what six foot away. He's got this. That's taking me three probably. Yep. You know, it's like I'm not, I don't know if it's taking me three, but, but it's, the, I'm I'm two putting. TV, for sure. They try to give you as much information as you could possibly yeah. handle on how difficult the greens yes. are. Yeah. But I don't think any of us can really understand. So I you don't think you can navigate greens that are like a pool table. <laughs> I know. I, no, I actually I liked, I played like a, a bumpy pool table, <laughs> the pro am at uh, Indian Creek before the uh, pinnacle bank championship. Yeah. I did that once. And so they had the greens rolled. Like I've never ever experienced in my life. It's actually really nice. And especially the pro well, because you, true because you'll have right. a, you'll have like that guy's caddy just pointing to a spot and after the first two putts that you blow by because like ah, this isn't like it is a Johnny Goodman yeah uh, it it actually <laughs> goes where it's supposed okay. to and you give it some touch it's amazing okay gives back me hope. to this though it gives me hope so you have a four shot lead on eighteen as an average Joe but you have a professional caddy your job is just to get it off the tee not to shank it get it into the fairway I maybe could get us then, to a playoff. And then get it, <laughs> but you have a professional caddy that's going hit it here, hit it right here. Yeah, yeah but, but I gotta, it hit, doesn't matter. But I gotta hit it. There. I gotta hit the ball. That's the thing. I gotta hit it there. <laughs> now there is a. Uh, is it? Heaven forbid if I have to chip. Oh well, God. How about like some of the holes, like <laughs> no. one? I could never tee off from one. I'd be afraid of killing somebody. Yeah, that right. is sitting because it's all lined up. Yes. Now. Yep. Even like, on 18, and that that looks skinny you know, enough for you me. Got, you know what, guys? You might want to go back a little bit further. Yeah, scoop back. Scoop I, I, I've, I've had, I've had, this, I've had the snap hook thing going on lately. I don't know. No, yeah. Those people would be in grave danger. Grave danger. Or not. It would probably just roll up to their feet. Like, I, oh, look, there's a ball. I would be a quaky mess. <laughs> I would be, every shot would be, my knees would be just shaking. My hands would be like. <laughs> so they're getting, like, let's just say they, you know, the pros par it. I got to take an eight to get us to a playoff. Maybe. Mm. maybe, yeah, maybe. yeah. Because if you if you put it that way, maybe even mm. in my worst round, maybe snowmen are usually <laughs> not on the card. I got a chance. I can get you some sevens. I got a chance to. But win. again, I'm pl I'm comparing that to my experience of playing in yeah Omaha, and and other, yeah, and, and like public <laughs> courses in other states. Benson National, by the <laughs> it way, is, it is. I had a T-shirt that says Benson National. You show up to drop off your clubs, and they're like, "Are you prepared for this?" Go, oh yeah, I played this uh, public course in right. Omaha, Benson. Yeah, in like a '61. <laughs> they, they they tell me that it rolls just like a gun. Yeah, it's very similar. <laughs> <laughs> they, that's what they tell me anyway. But the thing I like is that we get the, we, this course is one time a year. Now, now they shut it down. We won't see it again until it, next it's year. It's so awesome. That's why when they did it in the fall for the 2021, it was just so different. So weird. Yeah. They still pipe in the bird noises, by the way. Oh, yesterday they, they were on a roll. Yeah. yeah. They, I, I heard so them. much that I was like, are those real birds? So much that we were watching pause the TV because there were birds outside. Like, is that on my TV or is <laughs> yeah. that outside? Uh -huh. yeah. No, that's the TV. Yep. But oh, here, but, so peaceful, but mixing though. music. So how about when they did the thing with Vern? Yeah, like the music. It was a little it was loud. Like, yeah, yeah, it so was you a little loud. Hear everything Jim Nance was saying, right. and you could, but you could tell that Vern was crying. Yeah, and it's probably good for Vern. Like I feel like maybe they should have had a camera shot on him mm -hmm. or something like well, that. Well, here's what I he thought they might do. It would have been, it yeah. would have been outside the norm of the Masters. But what if Bill Rafter <laughs> like made an appearance? Because like you think of his great partners, yeah, whether it be Gary Danielson yep. or Bill Raftery, mm -hmm. that would have been pretty special. Get old Grandpa Bill up there, but they're there as they were going through because they did a couple of times they did like a tribute to Vern. You think about like the events in sports history that we talk to talk about to this day that he was behind, like the '92 Kentucky Duke game. Yeah, that was him. Yep, yep. Tanya Harding. That was him. He's done. He's done everything. The the um, most NCAA tournament games. Uh, kick six. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's right. Man, I mean, all the, all, the time, all the tiger moments at Augusta mm -hmm. in your life. In your Yeah, so good. Thank you, Vern. Thanks, thanks, Vern, for everything. And I'm glad he came down from the tower to sit in his little chair and <laughs> was, watch Tiger. And be a great. tree. It was great. But he was a tree. <laughs> it almost startled Tiger. Tiger like, oh. handshake meme woods. It startled Tiger. <laughs> It looked oh, like oh, he was. Oh, there you are. It looked like he was meeting a tree. Yeah, he's like the Keebler elf just like came out of the tree. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hey, buddy. And people were trying to convince you that was Vern. That could have been anybody. <laughs> it was a tree with a hand. It was amazing.
It was just an, an elderly patron who was watching some golf. <laughs> All right, guys, get out there. Uh, we'll, uh, you know, train for next year when yeah. we get in that media round. Yeah, we do. Don't Me worry. Too. Don't worry. Be amazing. A couple more rounds at Benson. We'll be there. <laughs> couple more rounds at Eagle uh, Eagle Run. Eagle Run. Oh, yeah. yeah Terra Hills will be perfect. Yeah. It's time to step up to the executive I mean, when they, then they, when they welcome us out to uh, the rail or uh, out to O's. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Club. Oh, yeah. OCC. OCC. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, mm, nah. Yeah. <laughs> looking at you. I don't think you're allowed to go anymore. First of all, <laughs> can you tuck in your shirt? No. <laughs> See, why do they have that? See, there you go. Missed opportunity with the uh, senior open that they could add a media thing yep. for like after. Uh, they did oh, before. Yeah, they, 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 they did before. Did before yep. Yep. But the course wasn't set up. Yeah, that but would be do cool. it like the Monday after the senior open where yeah. we might have a little bit better chance to play that OCC. Would, set that up would like be that. very cool. Uh, before you guys go, I have some uh, breaking news for you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Kese Tomonaga is engaged. Oh, to that the North Park that girl. girl, Hannah. That that girl, Anna Fitzpatrick. Yeah, Anna Fitzpatrick. Oh. A normal, regular girl. Congratulations, <laughs> Kese. <laughs> like just like Shohei's wife. It, and Nebraska puts shooters shoot. Shooters shoot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And, um, with, and with that, will that be the biggest thing ever in North Platte? Oh. <laughs> Ooh. I didn't know that's that where she was from. Yeah. Uh, yep. That's hilarious. Maybe. Casey like, Tomanaga is now of North Platte. Is that like, North Will Platte? that be the largest wedding that's crashed in the state of Nebraska? Please tell me it's at, like at the North Platte Legion. Oh, my God. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of County 6 license plates rolling in. Let's Are see. they six? I think like, they're six. Like, would it be Most too much? famous people from North Platte. Danny Woodhead. Yep. Yeah, he's got to be up there. Buffalo Bill. Oh, yeah, that's right, because they have the, the exhibit. Yeah, Buffalo mm -hmm. Bill's probably pretty high, too. It's the biggest wedding does since it, the Buffalo it, Bill does wedding. Does it go Buffalo Bill, Danny Woodhead, and then <laughs> Casey Tomonaga? Now, would it surprise you if somebody crashed the Tomonaga Fitzpatrick wedding wearing a 30 jersey? Uh, I expect it. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen at this point. What if the guy wearing the Sec Henry jersey shows? <laughs> <laughs> that guy will be there. He won't be invited, but he'll yeah, be there. I feel like I was supposed to be here. Get Come the on. guy in the Sec Henry jersey. <laughs> And he wears the second Henry jersey. All right, that's the crossover. Oh, Colin that's like a, like a, look they're at, cute. They're, they're look at nice. our boy that's wearing. Adorable. He looks so happy. Some dress shirt. Yeah. He should have worn his three point champion uh, <laughs> chains. <laughs> Maybe he'll do that. To the he, it's probably in a different. He picture. looks like he's fourteen. Yeah, he <laughs> uh, the crossover is powered by Everlevel Concrete Repair in Omaha at everlevelconcrete.com. It's Monday. We'll start things off next. That's the crossover. The Connor Happer Show is next on sixteen twenty The Zone. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Would you rather have to eat one hot dog every morning immediately after waking up for the rest of your life or every time you touch a piece of paper, it cuts you and draws blood? Well, I would rather eat, eat a hot dog oh, every morning. Give me that dog. Kevin says yes, wiping after using the bathroom. Oh, Toilet oh. paper. Oh. Ouch. Unsportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Warm and windy for Monday. Expect southeast winds gusting 20 to 30 miles per hour throughout the day with mostly to partly sunny skies. Highs will top out in the mid to upper 80s. Chance for a few isolated showers and storms in the evening. More widespread storms expected Monday night into Tuesday morning. Some could be strong to severe. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. Forget the drive to Colorado or Missouri. Dub into any Omaha 42 degrees and indulge in a curated cannabis experience. Premium flower, cannabis, pre-rolls, and cannabis accessories paired with an elevated customer service experience. All are waiting for you at 42 degrees. From novices to connoisseurs, we're here to elevate your cannabis journey. 42 degrees, your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service. Buy your mob's house. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. 
Come join OSI Industries in Oakland, Iowa. Does a retention bonus and a $3 an hour attendance incentive sound good to you? Besides competitive pay starting at $17.50 and up per hour, overtime is available. OSI Oakland offers great benefits including medical, dental, vision, and 401k. OSI Oakland is hiring for all shifts including production and maintenance. Apply at osigroup.com slash careers or at their plant Monday and Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Must have ID and closed toe and heeled shoes to enter the plant. OSI is an equal opportunity employer. Bonuses are subject to eligibility and program requirements. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank. Members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Tell us how you feel on the JTEC Construction and Solar Zone Twitter feed. Reach Gary, Nick, Connor, Josh, and John anytime on the JTEC Construction and Solar Zone Twitter feed. Contact the official exterior and solar experts of the Huskers. JTEC Construction at your exterior experts dot com. It's the Connor Happer Show. Are we sure we want to do this? Uh, could you, like, make an announcement that we're ready? It's the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. All right, welcome in. Happy Monday. It's the Connor Happer Show here on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. Connor Happer, Josh Hodson with you. Hope you enjoyed your uh, weekend with some lovely weather and hopefully a gas mower too. Why not? Get out there a second time. Go back to back. Who cares? Just go over the lines. Make sure they're right. I did go over my front yard twice because it got, like I said, it was met some with some unexpected thickness mm. in the front. So, uh, yeah, we got through it. Things are looking sharp. Uh, weather may be deteriorating at some point this week, but uh, yeah. We'll take what we can get because it is April 15th. If you haven't done your taxes by now, um, take it up with the IRS, I guess. You know, you're going to probably want to figure that out. They're very forgiving. Yeah, I've heard that many times. <laughs> they call you and they're just like, okay, if you could just get that done as soon as possible. Just whenever you got it. Mm -hmm. uh, so happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back for the weekend. Today on the show, we'll talk to Mike Schaefer at the bottom of the 11 o'clock hour. Nebraska football got a couple commitments over the weekend from their 2025 class. Uh, might touch on that a little bit and some other things with him. Uh, there was a scrimmage over the weekend. Same thing we'll uh, talk about with Sam McEwen in the 1 o'clock hour. That is the lineup powered by the referees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Elsewhere on the show, we'll, uh, we'll recap some of the great pop culture events that we took in over the weekend, Josh, like Ryan Gosling's and Caitlin Clark's SNL. Uh, also the WNBA draft is tonight, by the way, uh, the Billy Joel special, which was robbed by uh, local news across the country. Yeah. I want to know what happened. I want, I want answers. Oh, well, take it up with, uh, take it up with CBS. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the golf piece, uh, from Scotty Scheffler from over the weekend. Nice job by Scotty's wife, not having that kid. Yeah. So he didn't, that would have been a. That would have been pretty rough. Boy, there would have been some takes yeah, today. Yeah, there would have been some real takes. Uh, Troy Dannon talking to Adam Rittenberg in a story that came out, uh, I believe that was Friday or potentially over the weekend. Uh, both of our local baseball teams dropping two out of the three this weekend in conference play and meeting again tomorrow in Lincoln where uh, both teams will need it pretty bad. Creighton in Nebraska tomorrow. Um, like I said, some highlights from the scrimmage. Uh, we saw a couple interesting things being done with spring games over the weekend, and we'll take a look at Delano Banton's stat line. Oh, this guy. 
all Ooh. of those things coming up on the show today. Want to hear from you guys? 402 951 1620 on the 42 degrees of source hotline. You can uh, tweet at Happer. You can call or text that number, by the way. Tweet at Happer Show at Connor Happer on the JTEC Construction Zone Twitter feed. Email Connor or Josh O at 1620thezone.com. On the Equitable Bank inbox, we say good morning to our YouTube streaming audience, YouTube 1620 The Zone TV, or conveniently located on our website, 1620thezone.com. Leave a comment on there just so we know you're alive. Just so we know you're there. It's nice to hear from you all. It is. We haven't talked all weekend. No. Josh, what did you do this weekend? Uh, a lot of family time. Good. What did I do this weekend? I realized that I hadn't been home in several weeks. And <laughs> then I also wasn't home that much this yeah. weekend again, but I was just here. So you were just home. Yeah. While taking in some indoor soccer. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the Omaha Kings game Friday night. Nice. Nice. Congrats to them. Made the championship game. Didn't quite get the job done Sunday. That's okay. There's always next year for yeah. that. Probably you'll fuel the fire for next year. Definitely. I'll finish business season. I, I would imagine. Yeah. Make the t-shirts. Restore the order of the Omaha Kings. Taking the championship. All right. Uh, so that's the setup for the show today. Like I said, Schaefer will join us at the bottom of the hour. Um, also, I want to talk about Adrian Martinez. Remember Adrian Martinez? I do. Yes. Yes. Right. So I, there's a lot of narratives about Adrian Martinez. And then I saw a lot of things over the weekend about how he threw for 330 yards in a UFL game. And I saw a whole bunch of tweets that said, he's a Husker. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. It's, it's not what I heard a couple uh, years ago. Hmm. I remember paying attention to him closely when he was at K-State. I got a couple questions I want to confront you all with during the show today regarding one Adrian Martinez. And we kept receipts. Yeah, we're keeping receipts here. Uh, The transfer portal is open in college football, or will open tomorrow officially, but there will be be a, a slew of people entering. My guess would be that Nebraska will lose a couple unexpectedly. Maybe not right off the bat, but definitely, um, you know, as spring ball comes to a close or maybe even after the spring game, I believe the window closes the 30th. So there's only a couple day window in between the end of Nebraska's spring game. And then when the transfer portal, like the time in which you can enter the transfer portal ends, of course you can pick your new school at any point in time, but those spots fill up. Can't imagine that Nebraska is really looking for much as far as entries into the portal at this moment. We'll once again, we'll talk about that as it pertains to Nebraska, the way that they're, uh, the way that they kind of have gone about their business this spring, which I think is fun and and good. So we'll talk about that during the show. Also, we tribute Ryan Gosling. Thank you, Ryan, for being who you are. As the as the number one Ryan Gosling fan, I made it a point. There was Josh, this is a conversation about television. There was two appointment viewing things this weekend for me that were on live television, right? There's nothing like live television. We love it all the time in sports. And yet when we watch our TV, for some reason, we act like on demand is this great thing. Your television told you what to watch this weekend. My television told me what to watch, and I am forever grateful to my television. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling me that Ryan Gosling was on SNL, even though I had it in my calendar for months. And thank you for telling me that Billy Joel, actually, this was Josh who told me that. Thank you for telling me that Billy Joel was going to be on television on Sunday night doing his 100th show at Madison Square Garden. Thank you. What a weekend for Connor Happer's I've, television. And I was out at the Storm Chasers games all weekend as well. Mm-hmm. They took five out of six from your Gwinnett oh, no. Stripers. Baby Braves in trouble. They look they, they look great. They look great. The Storm Chasers did. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have that as well. And the next the time Royals we see them at hot. home, uh, they'll be uh, playing Paul Skeens. Paul Skeens. Paul Skeens will be in town. Royals last two out of three to the Mets, but that's okay. Wait, that's it's fine. That that doesn't matter. Nope. Still still hanging on. Just fine. They play the White Sox this week. They stink. It's a marathon. Two and thirteen. Chicago White Sox. It's a get right series. It's a get. It's it's a get right series. Yep. By the time they leave Chicago, the White Sox will be two and Mm fifteen. They'll be trudging their way to one hundred and twenty losses this year. Can't wait for that. All right. That's the setup for the show today. We'll come back. We will uh, start things off. Some sports things from over the weekend. Sports adjacent. As well, love it if you hung out with us for a couple hours in the Connor Hepper Show on 1620 The Zone. Omaha's most listened to all sports radio station. Again and again and again. 1620 The Zone. 
Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Not one based on Carol. She's more focused on hitting a high note than the car in front of her. Why pay a rate based on anyone else? Get one based on you with DriveWise from Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California. Subject to terms and conditions. Rates are determined by several factors which vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for purposes of rating. While in some states, your rate could increase with high-risk driving. Generally, safer drivers will save with DriveWise. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates North Park, Illinois. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is this never ends. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your time share or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. 800-462-3333. Hi, I'm Kamiko, the founder of Miko's Hot Chicken. When we started our family restaurant, we were also raising a family. But let me tell you, it wasn't easy. Our Chase Inc. car was there to reward us on all of our business needs. Now we have a thriving location. And we're hungry for more. With the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited card, you can earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase. So your business can go from here to possible. Chase for business. Make more with yours. Real business owners compensated for their participation. Cards issued by J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member of FDIC. Subject to credit approval. Terms apply. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. K-O-Z-N Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. I got an email this morning from David. Hi, David. He writes into the Equitable Bank inbox. This is before the show. He says, My wife and I track when my son gets up every morning. This morning she asked me when he got up, and was it 707 or 710? In my head, my response was 707 is 710. <laughs> so I guess you were right. 707 is 710. Much like 29 is 30 and 38 is 40. Everybody's coming around. Once again, Josh, eventually 
You'll either see it my way or you'll continue to be wrong. <laughs> that should be the new name of the show. Uh, Scotty Scheffler won the Masters. Yes, have he you, did. Have you seen this? Have you heard about he this? He was the favorite. He was the favorite and he won the Masters. Um, he was the number one player and he won the Masters. Tiger Woods did not win the Masters. He did not. Did you see the uh, the Tiger Woods drama, Tiger Woods related drama post Masters? I it, saw he made good with that tree. He did. He did shake that tree's hand. <laughs> that tree sounded a lot like Vern Lundquist for some reason. That picture is so good. I've seen that meme love- about six times now, and I laugh every time I see it. <laughs> Tiger Woods and the tree have made up. Tiger handshake meme Woods. It's really good, uh, but so his playing partner this uh, on on Sunday was uh, the low amateur in the field and the only amateur to make the cut. Neil Shipley, the twenty three year old Ohio State graduate student. Oh wow! Um, awesome experience for that guy, right? He's basically right. running dead last the Masters, and he's got Tiger Woods along his side, so he gets to walk along Tiger Woods. A special day, and a reporter asked him afterwards. He said, hey, I thought um, it looked like Tiger, you're walking down one of those fairways, Tiger, looked like Tiger gave you a note. Uh, what did the, just wondering what that was all about, what the note say? And Neil Shipley kind of turns, he looks over to his right, and he goes, uh, nope, mm, nope, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, he was like, when he gave you that note, or when, when he gave you that something walking down the fairway and he goes, nope, that didn't happen. Oh my, there's cameras everywhere. Neil Shipley was also in the, uh, in Butler cabin because he was the little low amateur and everyone kept noticing how he kept peeking out of the corner of his eye. The, the chairman of the masters was addressing him directly. So if, if you're watching along with us on YouTube, like this would be normal looking directly at the camera or looking directly at the person. And he was going like this the whole time. <laughs> He's just looking off to the right out of the corner of his eye, like a side eye emoji. Now, remember Tiger Woods also very famously uh, uh, gave Justin Thomas something walking oh, yeah, yeah, down yeah. the fairway uh, earlier last year. Many takes were had about that. Many takes were had about that. And uh, in this case, Neil Shipley just decided to not go there. I appreciate him lying, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know what that note was. I don't know what was in there. I but it's best $500. off $500. It's best off probably to just stay out of it mm-hmm. if you're Neil Shipley. Josh, could you, you know what? I could probably find the, the clip for you real quick. Um, but it's 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 pretty funny. Um, because he's just like, nope, nope, that didn't happen. Here, let me let me send it to you right now. Um yeah, so we can't have 10 seconds where we're not talking about Tiger right now. Oh wow, what a what a head of hair this kid has. Yeah, yeah. And his name is Neil, N-E-A-L, which is a great, great name. So when you get that, Josh, go ahead and load that thing up for me. Real okay. I should have been more prepared for this because I knew we were going to talk about this. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Charles, by the way, writes in he's on YouTube. He says, the note Hi, said, the pimento cheese sandwiches are gross. <laughs> Maybe. What did Tiger's note say? Also, Theo comments in and he asks, did you cover the Husker QB controversies yet? We'll get there, Theo. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Controversy seems maybe a little strong. The controversy of Dylan Rayola will be st- <laughs> lined up under center week one. Controversy seems a little bit, but trust me, just g- give me 10 minutes here. Let's we'll talk about okay. the masters and we'll, we'll get there. I am ready. Here's Neil Shipley after the masters and his round playing with tiger woods. Yeah, you know, I saw on one fairway on a fairway, he wrote something and handed you a note. What, what was that about? He's, no, he, he didn't. He, oh, I thought he wrote something and handed you handed you a uh, piece of paper. No, no, that that no, that didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> Mm-mm. Didn't happen. Nope. nope. Didn't Sorry. Happen. Sorry, sir. Now, to be fair, there is I haven't seen any evidence that it actually did happen. Okay. I mean, maybe the guy okay. is making it up, but um, 
I don't know why he would. <laughs> but, yep. Uh, so Tiger Woods finishes uh, dead last at the Masters. Of people who made the cut. Of people who made the cut. That is true. 16 over. Um. Yeah, I mean, so just let let's do the tiger thing real quick since we're on it. Um, he he's dead. I, I mean, he's 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 forty eight years old. He called this week a good week because he didn't withdraw, didn't die, <laughs> actually physically die. Um, but the only time I ever saw him this weekend is when he was rubbing icy hot all over himself with already was wearing various patches of icy hot spread throughout his body he had he hit one way ob on a hole and then had to take the cart back to the t the cart of shame back to the t like it's pretty sad it's sad but the the dream of tiger is dead we had 2019 and um you know even before 2019 people would have told you oh well he's he's never going to do this again there's no chance of this ever happening again now is the time now is the time to say this. It's not going to happen. He's, he's not going to win the He might win some tournament. I don't know. But he's not going to win the Masters again. He's 48 what, years old. What a fun Buick Open it will be. What a fun Buick Open it will be. Exactly. Uh, speaking of Tiger Woods, so it's time for me to ask the, the question that people who don't know ball, a.k.a. golf, a.k.a. me, ask every single time a young guy looks like he's about to take over golf or slash is taking over golf. Mm-hmm. Is Scotty Scheffler the next Tiger Woods? Oh my gosh! Is it, have you ever heard oh, that question before? I, I, I guarantee, have. if we're turning, what do you think they're talking about? If I turned on uh, ESPN, if or I turn on Channel Thirty One right now, right now, yeah. D- give me a guess, but because you can't see the TV behind you. All right, give me a guess. Uh, uh, LeBron, oh, it's uh, it's Pat McAfee. Let's go to the chit chats. LeBron play play in. Uh. Well, I actually don't know because on 31, there's Pat McAfee and on 30, there's the Boston Marathon. Oh, okay. It's a special day of programming. Yeah. So there's no chit chat shows going on right now. Stephen A had the day off. Stephen A must have taken today off. Indeed. Well, his show's over. Scheffler's awesome, man. He's, uh, he's, he's kind of unflappable. He doesn't really emote at all. Um, and like he's, He's kind of just a stone cold killer. Like he could have, he could have botched that thing about six different ways on the, on the back nine there and just didn't, I mean, just hit a, a good safe shot every single time. It's so cool the way the masters does it too. And even, even like, even when it is well in hand and the guy's got a four shot lead coming up 18, like there's still drama because you want to see, you want to see how he reacts. Like, the, golf does a really good job of making it about the people and about 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 the golfers and about their families and stuff like that. Jim Nance, um, you know, for as much as we talk about Vern Lundquist and you know J- Nance's call of the of the of the last putt going in wasn't necessarily the best thing I've ever heard, but it was, um, but like he does this every year. He knows every member of everybody's family, like. He could he could just attach the face to the um to the people that are there. Like that's cool. That's the stuff that makes the masters cool. You get to learn about these guys. Um and so they it's a tournament that does it better than every other tournament that's out there. And congratulations to Scotty Scheffler. Is he him, Josh? You you have to say this as a gol- as a non golf guy who's watching golf for the one time this year, you have to answer the question, is he next? I mean, he's got that assassin in him that some of the other guys didn't have like we we've been down this road with jordan spieth and rory mcelroy and and those guys had a bit of choke in their game yeah oh still do still do yeah still yeah. do so he yep. put me down for a maybe there you go josh it, it sounded like a yes to me by the way we get this on the equitable bank inbox from john hi john uh, subject line is 3840. Let me see if I can get you to admit your error. If you are paid $38 an hour, do you make $40 an hour? Yes, because that's what I tell people. Mm-hmm. If I make $38 an hour, and for some reason that's a conversation point, you'd say, I make $40, about $40 an hour. Or if you say, I make, uh, you know, you wouldn't tell people that you make $438,000 a year. You tell people that you made 
four hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. If I was making that much, I'd probably just say half a mil. Yeah, exactly. You'd round up to the nearest big <laughs> one, or thirty-eight, like thirty-eight thousand, or forty thousand. About forty thousand. About forty thousand. About, 40, about, about forty thousand. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So, I'm still right. Thank you. If I was fi- if I was five eight, I'd tell people I was five ten. Which I am, and I do. Says it on my driver's license. I just tell people my height. Yeah, because you're taller than five ten. That's right. You're one of those fortunate people. And I and I maintain my steady belief that nobody is five ten. This is a good take from you. Nobody is five ten. Mm-hmm. You tell people you're five ten if you're below five ten. And if you if you actually are five ten, you tell people you're six foot. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's easy. Uh Matt writes in on the Equal Bank inbox. I'm at he says Tiger needs to join live and get paid. Not that he needs it, but play less holes and do as they do there in tournaments. He can't play that many holes in a tournament and win. Yeah. Uh, Tiger's already dug too far too far in that hole on the on the PGA hole yeah, to yeah. be able to go back at this point. And he's already got all the money in the world. Like just he's gonna take all of the tournaments off. He'll play he'll be a just the majors guy, and we'll see if he can put it together for one more. But it ain't gonna be the Masters. I'd just like to see him have fun. Like, look, look like you're enjoying it. No, whatever, it, whatever it is. It looks like a chore to him. Yeah. Well, cause it is his body doesn't work. Anymore. And we, we got some of that when he was golfing with his kid that one time they did like the father son. Yeah. The, the challenge or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it looked like he was genuinely enjoying that. Yeah. I think he likes his, he likes playing with his son. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, Andy says on the YouTube, he says it's Charlie's time. It's Charlie's time to shine. Charlie time. Also, Andy says Tiger won't win another tournament, which is fine. And the only way he will uh, is on 2K golf, which could still do that as well. Never lost. Never lost on 2K golf. That's for sure. Uh, Jesse writes in, when you're 38, do you tell people you're 40? No. Oh, that's the exception to the rule. See, this is good because I am 38. No, you say you're 38. I do. You tell people you're 30. Anything to not tell them I'm close to 40. It, it's same thing with weight, too. Chris Montana says if you don't say you weigh 178 pounds, you say that you weigh 100. Oh, he actually agrees with me on that one. But yeah, if you wanted to sh- shave all the pounds off that you possibly can, like you actually weigh 178, you tell people you weigh 178. Or you could say about 180, you know, somewhere around there. About 180. Maybe that's the exception, the age, the age part. Yeah. People want to know your exact age. There's a lot of reasons for that. A lot of weirdos out there. Yeah, a lot of weirdos out there. Uh, the uh, the Masters was once again great television, even though it wasn't really dramatic in any way, shape, or form. We so, got to watch that uh, that Swedish guy eat. Mr. Oberg? Yeah. Everybody thinks Mr. Oberg is next. They love Mr. Oberg. Yeah. He had a big candy bar and dropped it. Somebody <laughs> knocked it out of his hands. How dare those filthy masters patrons? Animals. Guy was trying to just get high fives and hang out with the, the patrons of the tournament, and they slapped the Snickers right out of his hands. How dare they? Barbarians out there. People like that Oberg guy. They do. They like him a lot. I like it because it's got that umlaut or whatever it is over the A, uh-huh. and so you have to say O. Oh, and so only people who know ball actually say his name right. <laughs> you got to actually watch, guys. You got to actually watch it. All right. Uh, we'll come back. So on uh, on Theo's question about the quarterbacks, I do have a take about it. Let me get to that on the other side before we get to Schaefer. Um, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not salacious in any way, shape, or form. It's there's no drama going on over there. And in fact, that's the exact topic. There is no drama. That's a good thing. I'm explain a little bit more next on 1620 the zone live from the host coffee studio this is 1620 the zone not too long ago i heard jensen tire and auto guarantees if you find a tire they carry advertised by a local competitor at a lower price they'll match it i'm always looking for a great deal so i thought i'd see for myself try as i might i couldn't find a better price than a jensen So I bought my tires there, and guess what? They had the tires I wanted at the right price, and they had me in and out in no time. 
Sure, I'll always be on the lookout for a great deal. And if I happen to find one, I'm bringing it to Jensen because I know they'll match it. Plus, I'll get their amazing customer service. Hi, I'm Matt Jensen, president of Jensen Taranato, inviting you to experience the difference at our locally owned and family owned company. Check us out at JensenTaranato.com today. Get ready for warm weather driving with April Tire Deals at Jensen. Save up to $200 on new sets of Goodyear, Cooper, General, Continental, Maxxis, and Kelly Tires. Check out Jensen's Money Saver April Tire Deals at JensenTireAndAuto.com today. You're sitting with a couple of pals at Backlot Tap House in Exarban Village when your server brings up this perfectly cooked smash burger. The smell of a juicy beef patty sends a waft of aroma right up your nose and your eyes instinctively close because, well, awesomeness. Your friends get their orders and you just kind of look at each other and think, yeah, this is going to be good. Backlot Tap House with 30 beers on tap, happy hour every day, trivia nights, live music, and more. Exarban Village and BacklotTapHouse.com. If you need bold banners to boost your business, but you're on a budget, think Staples. Posters, flyers, signs, and menus for less? Think Staples. Staples can print anything you need to move your business forward. Now at Staples, save $50 on your print purchase of $150 or more. Same-day service available on hundreds of items if you order by noon. And all backed by Staples Print Perfect Guarantee. So it's done right or it's printed again free. Staples, your local print and marketing expert. And 6-1, visit staples.com slash print for details. I want to learn how to cook, but I keep ordering takeout. I plan to rearrange my closet, but I stopped after picking the clothes up off the floor. Accomplishing goals is hard, but when your goal is to learn a new language, Babbel makes it easy. In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel's award-winning language learning app will help you start speaking another language. Start having conversations in as little as three weeks. Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Vous êtes où? Vous êtes où? Babbel's bite-sized lessons make it easy to learn words and phrases you'll actually use. So when someone asks, How's your French going? You can say, Babbel est amusant et facilite grandement l'apprentissage d'une nouvelle langue. Et cela ne prend que 15 minutes par jour. When you want to really learn another language, it starts with Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. Just go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Spring is sprung, and you know what? You need to look good. You need to get your fit looking like rad. And Lily Clothing and Well Suited can take care of you because you got prom, you got graduation, you got weddings, and you need to look your best. And you can look your best right now. Why rent a suit? Buy a suit. And you know what? You can get a suit for as little as a $199 at Lonely Clothing and Well Suited in the London Market, 132nd and West Dodge. Take care of yourself now. Why rent when you can buy this season at Lonely Clothing and Well Suited? Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through HIMSS, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you, discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at HIMSS, so is treating it. Just go to HIMSS.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source, by your mom's house. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. A Nebraska football scrimmaged over the weekend. Time for takes. Big scrimmage over reaction here on 1620 the zone. All right. So let's see what was let's see what came out of it, Josh. Okay. okay. Why why don't we why don't we take a quick look? Let's look at the at Nebraska football at uh, the account formerly known as at Husker FB underscore nation, which is now just at Husker Football, thank God. Um so there was a there was a video that was tweeted 15 hours ago 
took him a while to get the video to get the video out from Saturday. So here's the only recognition of the scrimmage that we have. Now, by the way, they'll do media availability tomorrow. Uh, there's an open portion of practice tomorrow, so you get more stuff tomorrow. But right now, all we have is the 21 seconds. Oh, so let me just narrate it second by second. <laughs> all right, here's what we got. We got guy walking into practice. There's a throw by Heinrich Harburg. Okay, two second timestamp. Throw by Heinrich Harburg. The ball is caught. Looked like by Ramir Johnson. Ramir Johnson. All right, on to second number three. Second number three features Heinrich Harburg throwing it again to a different wide receiver. Couldn't tell which one. Then somebody ran. Then Emmett Johnson started juking people. Ooh. Then there was slow-mo Emmett Johnson. And then there was Daniel Kalen. He threw a pass. Danny. That was at the eight-second mark. Somebody caught it. And then there's Daniel Kalen throwing another pass. That one looked like it was a touchdown. And then at the 15-second mark, Tutty? Dylon Riola Dylon. looked like he kind of stepped up into the pocket and oh. made a throw on the run. Ooh. It was caught by a man. Wow, man. And then... It ended. That's it. That's the video. Josh takes just one, uh, just one throw from Dylon, huh? One throw from Dylon, but two from the other two quarterbacks. I think we should read into it. Dylon's came last. Yeah, interesting. What do you think that means? He's the closer. Nebraska is going to have a three quarterback system this year, and they're they're going to use Dylan to be the fourth quarter guy. Definitely, you want to save everyone's elbows. I like that. I like that. It's a good idea. Prevent those quarterbacks from getting Tommy John, like all the baseball mm -hmm. pitchers. Mm -hmm. So here's my here's my point. All that we got from the highlight of the scrimmage was the 22nd, and and each each of the three quarterbacks making nice throws, completed throws, at least one. Um, and so they're very. Like, I'll give Matt Rule credit. For, like, he's very aware of what people are talking about. And he's very aware that people like to overreact to stuff, too. And so if you put Dylon and only Dylon in the highlight video, then people make assumptions off of that. If you put Danny and only Danny in the highlight video, then people make assumptions off of that. If you put Heinrich and only Heinrich in the highlight video, then people are going to be like, what the hell? What's going on? No offense. But that would that would probably have happened. So let me say this. I genuinely appreciate how, and, and, and listen to the inflection in which I say this, I appreciate how this team and this coaching staff, it is spring, I will remind you that it is April 15th, it is spring ball. They are just trying to practice. They're not saying anything about anything. They're not making any statements about anything. They're not saying what they're going to do this year. They're not saying who's going to win what position battle. You want to know why? Because those things aren't decided in spring ball. I know we care about spring ball because we're weird, right? And it's 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 something to talk about. And there are stories within this team. Like, I am interested in each of the three quarterbacks individually. I'm specifically in interested in one of the quarterbacks individually. But Dylan. This and what they do will factor in to the conversation as they break for summer and as they come back for the fall. Absolutely. I'm not trying to tell you that it doesn't matter. But what I am trying to tell you is that I'm really pretty sick and tired of doing the position battle thing every single day. Like this guy looks like he's ahead in the position battle. Well, guess what? It's April 15th. And it doesn't matter. And so they're just practicing. And that's what you hear from the coaching staff. We are like, we are literally just practicing. We are trying to get better at what we do. We're trying to perfect some things. The defense has its own thing because they're trying to take a step up from last year with a lot of the same personnel that they had. And obviously there are position battles to be had and there are position battles to be won on this team. But you don't win position battles in April. You don't. You could have things that apply to a position battle. You could put yourself in position to be in position come fall camp or in the summer in a leadership position. It's good to get the experience for especially these freshman quarterbacks like Daniel Kalen and Dylan Raiola. But I just think it's so refreshing. I think it is refreshing as hell that they are just practicing. 
and there's not all these statements about stuff and where they're going to be and what they're going to do. And they'll still get asked the question. And Matt Rule, every single time, is you know, when it comes up, the idea of like, hey, how good are you going to be this year? He always tells a story, um, the, the anecdote all the time about how people ask him is like, hey, are you going to go to a bowl game this year? He's like, I don't know, man. Give me a break. I'm just trying to practice. We're just trying to get better. Like, that is how you do it. <laughs> that That is absolutely correct. And if by virtue, like if if as a result of that, we all kind of calm down about spring ball a little bit. I think that is a healthy, healthy piece to what's going on here. Like we don't have to be talking about daily who's winning what position battle. It's stupid. It's pointless. And I appreciate that the staff understands that as well. They know that like the players should be approaching it as if they're battling every single day. And they are, but you don't like, to use the, I always use the semester and the test analogy as if it's school or something like that. Like every spring practice, as we look at it over a, a, a portion of a, over a, a calendar year, every spring practice is not a, it's not a test. It's not even a quiz. Like the tests are, you only get 12 tests, 12 regular season tests. And if you're lucky, you get a 13th. And if you're really lucky, you get a 14th. If you're really, really lucky, you get 15, 16, right? Or 17, I guess this year, so whatever it might be. Like you only get that many tests. Those are the tests. We have little quizzes in the meantime, and um, those are probably practices in the fall. I don't know what these are. These are just assignments. They're just doing the assignments. They're they're they are getting better at getting better. That is what Nebraska football is emanating right now. That's what they're telling me. It's so refreshing. They're not, they're, they're not talking about how good they're going to be. They're not talking about where they lack depth or whether this and that and this and that in position battles. It's just they're working with what they have and they're getting better. And I think that, um, you know, theoretically they're getting better, I guess. They're getting better at getting better. They're working on getting better. And I think that idea kind of resonates throughout the, throughout the state. I mean, the way we talk about Nebraska football, and also, you know, the team as well. Like, I, I just think it, um, it, 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 it shapes the way they talk about it on it. Cause if you're focused on getting better every day, getting better at getting better, and you're not focused on simply winning a position battle, that's great. Like then you're, you're not trying to cheat your way to whatever you're, what it, you're just getting better, right? You're just getting better. If you're if you're good at Photoshop, are you just good at Photoshop, or are you just good, or, or, or are you actually good at the 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 overarching, um, like photo editing? I think you just you just figured out Photoshop. Like you've just figured out how to take the test. You've just figured out how to take the quizzes. What their goal is is to not get them to figure out how to take the quizzes and the tests. It's to be good at that, right? It's to be like if you're a baseball player. Are we getting good at baseball or are we getting good at that? Uh, there's probably no way to do it for baseball because it's such a day-to-day -day thing. Um, you know, one specific part of it. Uh, it's, it, it is a very all-encompassing, like all-together type of thing. And I think that's really healthy for practices that, let's face it, just aren't that they're important for them in, in in the sense that they are practices like for us and how we think about them it's just that they're not and so what you want to see at the end of it, it after practicing 15 times over a span of you know four weeks is that they they are better and they feel better or, the, or at least they have more information to set them up to feel better in the fall this is all sort of the lead up to that right because those are when the tests are that's what they got. And so I appreciate their, their, the way that they talk about spring ball. I do. I appreciate the way the, that they're, um, you know, the, the image that they're portraying to us. Here it is. It's practice. We are not giving you any bait, any sort of red meat whatsoever on who, what quarterback is doing what and who we're highlighting and who we're not highlighting. It's just here it is because this is something that we do. But how'd the O line look? Doesn't matter. 
Oh, no. Freshman quarterback back there? You're going to want a good O-line. Yeah, you are. In the fall. Going to need it. You, you will. In the fall. That's for sure. Right now, they're working on it. Like, if a coach came out, if uh, whoever's talking tomorrow came out and they were like, yeah, we probably need some work there. That's a that's fine. That's fine. That's yeah. that's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, we probably need some work at this spot. We need to figure out this. And we need to figure out that. Good. You have several more practices left in spring ball, and you have fall camp all. You have summer, and you have fall camp all ahead of you. And this is just giving you. This is arming you with the information that you need to prepare for those tests. It's like the preamble to the preamble. No sloganeering. This is not the test. Just remember that. Mike Schaefer is next. We'll talk with him about a couple uh, new recruits into the class. uh, We get an email, by the way, from John. Hi, John. I think we can and should infer from the highlight video that Dylan is not ready to be the starter and will be redshirting this season. Damn it. He's right. (laughs) All right, Mike Schaefer's next on the Counter Grand Show on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Handley. Yep. I am so glad that the, like Easter Bunny is like bored and no kids are coming to see him because I think there is no good looking Easter Bunny costume. <laughs> right. This is my yearly TED talk. <laughs> the true. Easter Bunny costume is the most hideous yeah. costume around the holiday that is out there. It's true. And so good on America that has stood up against throwing your kids on a stranger's lap that is wearing a hideous bunny costume. Yeah. We can do better. We are doing better. Okay. Thank you for stopping by. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. Weekdays 6 to 10 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Warm and windy for Monday. Expect southeast winds gusting 20 to 30 miles per hour throughout the day with mostly to partly sunny skies. Highs will top out in the mid to upper 80s. Chance for a few isolated showers and storms in the evening. More widespread storms expected Monday night into Tuesday morning. Some could be strong to severe. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. The Connor Happer Show returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. It's Champions Replacement Window Season, and we're celebrating with Buy Two Windows Get Two Free. If your windows are drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money on your energy bill, it's time to replace them. Champion Windows is here to help. Champion builds our own windows right here in the USA. We make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. We then build your project in our very own factory. Our install team manages your project every step of the way, and it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Turn your house into your dream home with more livable space in a new Champion sunroom or enhance your curb appeal with new siding, now 30% off. Don't wait. This sale won't last long. Buy two windows, get two free, and 30% off sunrooms and siding. Call 877-GO-CHAMPION or visit championsavenow.com to schedule a free in-home estimate today. All discounts apply to our regular prices. Select style supply. Minimum purchase required. Cannot be combined with other advertised offers. See store or website for details. What does Saul's loan on? Almost everything. Like jewelry, gold chains, bracelets, earrings, wedding rings, and high-end watches, guns, electronics, $10 to $50,000, super fast and easy with no credit check. Saul's loads on almost everything. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper and you can get it online? Go to hymns.com slash joy. 
Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation, discreet shipping if prescribed, and the process is 100% online. To start your free online visit, go to hims.com slash joy. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Hey, baseball fans, are you ready to win big this season with the Royals and tickets for less? Then sign up today for the MJ Melendez Home Run Sweepstakes. For every home run hit by MJ Melendez this season, one lucky fan, you're going to score big with a signed baseball and a $50 Tickets for Less gift card. Swing for the fences and sign up now at ticketsforless.com slash contest for your chance to win. Winners will be announced the day following a home run, and a multi-home run game equals multiple winners. So don't miss out. Learn more and sign up today at ticketsforless.com slash contest. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. You come to Guardians. Yeah, I have statistics to back up that we have people that listen. Mike Schaefer. Anytime there's sort of a debate as to who can do something, Happer would always put his name forth. For sure. Husker 24-7 on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. I could be a star. Morning baseball for Mike Schaefer's Cleveland Guardians. Against the uh, Boston Red Sox on, on Patriots Day. That is sure to brighten his day. But will he brighten ours? We're about to find out as Schaefer joins us now on the 42 Degrees of Soros hotline. Good morning, Schaefer. I feel like 10 a.m. baseball is something that they should strive for throughout the summer. It's just kind of nice. You I can just throw it on. Yes. It, it can just be there. We don't have to pay a ton of attention to it. But it's just sort of nice to have. Fortunately, during our show, uh, there's about... A hundred days during the uh, during the two hundred day like baseball calendar where the Detroit Tigers are playing starting at like one o'clock. So we are like the official show of the Detroit Tigers. We watch them about every day. Yeah, uh, how many Detroit Tigers can you name currently? Because they've, they've kind of shifted over. Tariq Skubal. Like- T- Tariq Skubal. Yeah. yeah, everybody's excited about Tariq Skubal. I'm just I want to see if he can throw a hundred innings again. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with it. Uh, Spencer Torkelson. Okay. Um, let's see here. They get some. Uh, they get some other guys. They get some other guys on that roster, don't they? Yeah, they have like twenty, twenty four other guys. On the <laughs> <major> <laughs> I haven't. I, the Royals haven't run into the Tigers yet, so I'll I'll find out like next week probably. The thought they played. Didn't they open the year with the Tigers? Uh, no, they opened the year with the Twins. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah, so if you name, if you told me that name all the twins, I'd name them all for you. But we don't have time for that, of course. Do you yeah, know Javi right. Baez is a tiger? Yes, Javier Baez is a tiger. There you go. That's true. Yeah. Okay. There they you don't go. want him to be a tiger, but he is definitely still a tiger. Hey, did you get your uh, did you get your baby a uh, little Masters caddy jumpsuit and take pictures of him? No, he has a uh, he has a green. Um, is a green Under Armour polo that we used as our like, hey, it's a golf thing related outfit. As the Masters is here, it was our, it was our like two month photo of them. Yeah, I really so, like the idea of the baby basically just being a like, kind of a prop. Like you just you kind of dress it up and and then he you know, like here's my update on my life. Here's what's going on. I guess the Masters are here. Time to dress the baby up as a golfer. Yeah, that's pretty much what it'll be as we do these photos throughout this first year. I will say I looked into the caddy thing, but at just like eight weeks or nine weeks, it didn't really seem necessary to pay that amount of money. It'll yeah. be more fun like next year at a little, you know, like 14 months old 
maybe walking, we can give him like a plush set of golf clubs that he can just carry around the house while wearing his jumpsuit. I think that would have more value. But even then, there, yeah, this is this is hard to believe. This level of customization is kind of expensive. What? What is it? What like? How much does it cost to buy a tiny baby master's jumpsuit? Uh, depending, like they could be anywhere from like sixty to over a hundred bucks. I mean, depending Jeez. on what what you want. Which, if you think about it, anyone that's had a child, they grow relatively quick, so you don't get to, you know, you don't get that many wears out of little tiny baby jumpsuits. Yeah, yeah. Master's then what do you do with it? You got to find another baby to give it to. <laughs> there should just be like uh people should just go in on a joint one that gets di- or like dry cleaned in between yeah. yeah exactly that's definitely an app that already exists that it, we're we're thinking that we thought of but we actually didn't yeah okay. baby shareables uh all right schaefer let's uh let, let's do the recruiting parts first couple commitments what do we know about uh jackson carpenter and bryson hayes yeah i mean i think they're not physically the exact same because Jackson Carpenter is a little bit taller, but they strike me as really similar sort of additions here for Garrett McGuire in the wide receiver room. And they're both fast. I, I would say that's kind of the calling part for each of them is they're fast. They're track guys that can run. Um, you know, I think they both basically be utilized on special teams early in their career where they could be return men um, or they could also be, uh, you know, gunners, coverage unit guys uh, help you in that regard. I just think that they have the athletic traits that Nebraska likes. And you go ahead and you add them both in there and you have some wide receivers you can sort of develop on the back end. And then you have these two guys in the class. So now you can kind of go hard after a Cortez Mills or some of the other Michael Terry, some of these other wide receivers that they like in this class. You've already got a couple guys in the fold and now you just want to add one or two more. And so it, it, that's sort of what it feels like to me. Um, they're more projectable back end of the class type individuals, but they have elite traits in that speed where you've got something to build off of. And Nebraska, I mean, really like Bryson Hayes. I mean, he had an offer uh, last fall. They got him out for a visit. Uh, he was here on campus multiple times, came in for junior day, then they got him back here this spring. And then Jackson Carpenter was part of that wave of early offers in January that included Pierce Mooberry and some of these other guys that we anticipate could end up being commitments down the line for Nebraska, too. So uh, a couple area guys that can also be here to help as you have this big official visit uh, weekend coming up with the, the spring game and then the official visits that you'll have in June, too. It's amazing, Schaefer, that Hayes is the first guy in the class who's not from the state of Nebraska. Well, technically he's not. They had a commitment from T.J. Simon. Uh, in December, and then he decommitted at the end of January. I think one of those situations where Nebraska was going to recruit past him and everybody knew it, and so he was going to open things back up to maybe find another opportunity. But, yeah, it, it was it went back to being all in-state guys, and then Jackson Carpenter was a fourth in-state guy. <laughs> and then they got really far out of state uh, with Mays High School in Kansas. Yeah, went all the way to Kansas for the guy. I we We, we probably don't talk as much anymore about, like, you know, how much of what's the percentage of the class that comes from the 500 mile radius? Like, do we have a better, um, do we have a better sense of that now as we're working into Matt rules, second class and kind of beyond now, it, it, it feels like a lot of it is, is going to be in inside the radius and they're going to take in-state guys commitments from them, even though, um, you know, maybe in situations where they would have told some guys to hang on, hang on, hang on in the past. Yeah, I think, I think it's just kind of been a good run of in-state players too, you know, like you, you kind of operate with what you have. And when you have double digit in-state guys getting power, you know, we call it power four now. Have have you made this switch? Oh, I haven't done that yet. No, I, that's the first time I've even thought of that in my brain. Like, isn't it weird? I, I had to write it the other day and I was like, I don't know if I like this. Can we just elevate the AAC to being power five level? Maybe we go to uh, maybe we go to the basketball model and start start calling them high majors. Okay, you could just say power conferences, but it felt so good to just say power five. Like yeah. it just fit. It yeah. worked on a lot of levels. It really was. And now, now I'm over here having to say things like power four, and it just doesn't it doesn't work as well. No. Uh, so just 
just something to keep in mind for everybody out there. Well, but, do we have to yeah, so, do we have to make the difference between power two and power four? Also, like, isn't there a di- isn't there a tier gap there? Big two, little two. Yeah, hmm. something to think yeah, about. Brighton Hayes holds three big two offers and fourteen <laughs> little two offers, as we determined. This would have been a lot <laughs> easier for me to play the guess the recruit game uh, back on the recruiting <laughs> hour. Would have made it a lot easier for me. Oh, that game is so dead right now. <laughs> you can't, you can't play that game anymore. You just can't do it. No, no, so no. They basically, I think, because it's been pretty good these last couple cycles inside the 500 mile radius, they're able to add a bunch of players in it. But I don't know that it's like, uh, I, I it's. It's important to them because they want any talent that they can get. And we saw another offer go out in South Dakota to Sean Hammerbeck, uh, who's in Winter, South Dakota, which I asked some South Dakotans where that's at. And it's, it's basically north of Valentine is what I'm being told. Mm, so that's out the there. part of South Dakota you don't really think about that much, or at least I don't. Uh, so he's out there. Um, so I don't even know if that's You don't think about the Black Hills? Uh, generally... Not when it comes to football recruiting, no. I just think of the I-29 corridor. Mm. Poll question, do you think about the Black Hills? Go ahead, put that one up, In general, I really don't either. I'm not going to lie. I I heard it's beautiful. I want to go. I've never been. It's way out there. Take take your little kid in the the caddy costume to to Mount Rushmore. He'll love it. Yeah, well, that sounds like a nice family trip that we can put on the on the schedule here. Schaefer, the line. Uh, I want to bounce this off. You I was talking about it before, uh, before we brought you on here. Um, th- this idea, like I-, I put out the, the idea that it feels like Nebraska football is, is just practicing, right? They, they're, it doesn't, they're not saying anything about anything. Like we don't have to talk about position battles and that can all be sorted out during fall. Like that's kind of for us to, to talk about, but like the, the highlight video that they put out from the scrimmage on Saturday was just, each of the quarterbacks making a throw, and that was kind of it. Like, I really like it. I I feel like the approach to to spring ball is really refreshing because it it like don't get me wrong. I think it's super intense, and there there there's definitely battles going on, and guys got to get ahead. But also at the same time, you don't you don't get the sense that it's like the biggest um it's the biggest thing in the world for for this group to be doing what they're doing right now. Like the big picture stuff will come later. Yeah, I I think that's pretty well put, and I don't think it needs to be the biggest thing in the world. Like it just, they just need to utilize these practices to get better and for guys to to develop. And sometimes that's some can be a more quiet thing than we make it uh, around here. And a lot of it has to do with Nebraska is sort of a big media contingent, and we have a lot of people who think about football in a lot of different ways, and it leads to different discussions, and we kind of overvalue certain things. I mean, I. I've, I've given this answer a bunch when asked about the running back position, but isn't it at this point, we just have to wait till October. Yeah. If, if we've learned nothing else about Nebraska football in the last seven to 10 years, just wait till October and the running back position will, will have some understanding of it because trying to determine who's doing well in the spring, hasn't particularly gone well uh, for us in the media as, as it relates to the running back. And it hasn't resulted in that running back just taking a job and, and going with it. So I, I think if you extrapolate that, like we have a pretty good indication as to this is a veteran team. They're older. We know who a lot of these players are. There's not a lot of position battles. You have to think a lot on. They added some portal pieces you expect to be helpful. There's a freshman quarterback you anticipate to be the starter. Like the storylines are sort of all out there and the names are pretty well known. Um, I think because they're in their second year with this, like you don't have to add a lot of hype or a lot of extra to yes. it. But they just need to go and get better. And then on top of it, and this is the kind of well duh comment of all of it, they just need to go and win games. Look, it's, it's all anybody at this point. Like how much spring hype even matters when all anybody wants around here is an eight and four season? I feel like the undertone, Shafe, correct me if I'm wrong here. Like th- there's an undertone to it, and it is. Well, if, if 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 we don't have to freak out about what running back is doing what and who stands where in the pecking order of that position or any other position, there is like an underlying if people are willing to accept that, there is the underlying like confidence of well, whatever happens, however it does shake out, I don't really care who's one, two, three. I just want to be confident that it'll work. And I like I think that's kind of maybe the part that's been 
like we've had our nervous moments, you know, plenty of them, uh, instances of panic around here. Do you think it's more confidence than just the ambivalence? Like it doesn't matter who the one, two, three are because it doesn't matter. Well, if it doesn't matter, then isn't there some sort of expectation that it's going to be okay? Or the expectation is that it, it won't dramatically affect the season one way or the other because the running back hasn't for several years. I mean, if you wanted to be cynical about it, that's the route that I would go. Well, they're going to have... Shockingly, if you wanted to be cynical about it. <laughs> that's why we talked to Mike Schaefer. They're going to have... <laughs> they're going to have three... Like, uh, uh, Rule even said it the other day. Like, there, there's going to be three running backs. They're going to, you know, hopefully give them, you know, two, 250 to 500 yards apiece, and, and that's going to be the story. Yeah, and it's it kind of hard to be enthusiastic about that, whether you're a fan or whether you're a media member or... I think even a coach to a degree, like it, I, they like this running back room. They've said that since they've been here and I just have never seen it. And so a large part of it for me is like, I just need to get to, okay, what does it look like when they're playing, you know, Rutgers or whoever in October, or um, what does it look like when they have a a critical game and it's third and two, are they trusting Dylan with his arm or are they going to trust the running back to try to get two yards with this offensive line? I mean, that's sort of where I'm at with it. And those questions can't be answered in the spring. And right. we've tried the last few years to answer that kind of thing. And it just, it doesn't matter. Um, but I, I just go back to this. I think it's such a veteran team that I think there's just a really strong comfort level of who's going to play, what positions they're going to be in. They've introduced some new pieces that seem like they're, they could be helpful. Um, but, you know, it, it's a weirdly quiet spring considering how important the upcoming season is. And oh, by the way, you have a five-star freshman quarterback. Um, what, if anything, should we be on the lookout for when the transfer portal opens tomorrow? Whether it's incoming or outgoing for Nebraska. You know, it's fascinating because Nebraska has this very far back spring game, right? Like, if you are a player that wants to go into the portal, do you feel pressure to do it before your spring is even over? Or do you still need those practice reps to be able to show people, you know, or do you feel like I have to jump in there now? Otherwise, I'm going to get left behind. Like, it's such a, yeah, that has to be a, such a difficult conversation. And you know, there's a handful of guys for Nebraska where it's like, we're going to have to go into the portal, but is it better for me to do it right now? Or do I need to get more practice reps and then jump in two weeks from now? And maybe the finite amount of spots have already kind of, you know, uh, lessened because some of these guys have gone in and ended up somewhere else. It's a it's a really difficult thing. My my other view on it is, and maybe I have a complete mystery here. I don't look for Nebraska to be really big off season shoppers right now. Mm-mm. I think their roster is kind of what their roster is, and it needs to be thinned down to meet the the requirement of the the eighty five scholarship. But I think they have a general idea of who's on their way out, and I don't look for them to to try to just go add pieces either. Um, I kind of think. I kind of think they like what they have. At least that's the messaging that feels like it's coming out of the spring. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Uh, Schaefer, before we let you go, by the way, we get a tweet here from Chad who says, um, I guess this is mostly toward me, the Black Hills are another 260 miles west of Winter, South Dakota. So I, I missed by a hair. <laughs> I think the, the, the real takeaway here is Winter, South Dakota is pretty remote. Yeah. Pretty remote. Pretty pretty remote. Okay. I don't. I'm excited to see which of the Nebraska media if Sean Hammerbeck were to be submitted to Nebraska. <laughs> which of the Nebraska media is making the trip up to Winter, South Dakota, to get those photos and video of a, of a high school game? I can't wait to find out either. It should be very exciting. It'll be fun. So we'll put everybody in a pool and mix them around a little bit. Yeah, uh, I like. It. All right, Shafe. Thanks for the time. As always, enjoy your week. Yeah, have a good one, Mike Schaefer, Husker twenty four seven not buyer of master's baby outfit. I saw a lot of babies in master's caddy jumpsuits over the weekend. A lot of babies. It's a popular thing to do. It is. It is. It's one, no, no shame on you. It's pretty cute. Yeah. One, it's one for the dads, right? Like they don't get a lot of say in the yeah dressing of the child most days, right? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I've seen a lot of kids dressed up in like sports, sportswear, things of that nature. Okay. Maybe so that was just my house. Maybe when they're that age, you, you can just, it, it's kind of just a free for all. 
Because that kid, I mean, the kid doesn't know. No. Then when, once the kid starts having opinions on what he wants to wear, he or she wants to wear, then. Yeah, then then it's a different conversation. Then you're in trouble. Yeah, then they take over. That's start sure. talk and they start talking back. A texter from the 402. Hi, 402. Wasn't it Allen Iverson that once said, we're talking about practice? It was. Great call by you, Texter. Yeah, great call because it's also what my lower third says on Zone TV. Huh. We're talking about practice. I believe the quote from AI was, we talking about practice. I didn't know use, how. Use correct AI grammar, Josh. Now that's just confusing when you say AI. AI, Alan Iverson. Is <laughs> Poll question, is Alan Iverson the real AI? <laughs> which, or which is... Which is the thing you think of when you think of AI, artificial intelligence or Alan Iverson? Okay. Yeah, do that one. Vote, please. Vote now at Happer Show. Odd News is next on 1620 The Zone. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio. 1620 The Zone. Host is hosting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Put your coffee department in good hands with Host Coffee Service, providing direct delivery and loaned coffee equipment with service programs. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Bet the NBA play-in tournament with a no-sweat same-game parlay from FanDuel, and you've got a lot of options. Because it doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or you already have an account, you're going to get bonus bets. I tell you, bonus bets back if your same-game parlay doesn't win on any Tuesday night matchup. And NBA same-game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance to score a bigger payday. Whether it's Sacramento, Miami, L.A., it doesn't matter. Have some fun with some same-game parlays however you want to play. Just head to FanDuel.com slash zone to bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay. That's FanDuel.com slash zone. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21-plus and present in Iowa. Minimum three-leg parlay required refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Your Omaha Stockmen are kicking off their 10th season and have their home opener at Ralston Stadium on April 27th at 7 against their Heartland Football Association foe, the Newton Nighthawks. Their home opener is also their fourth annual Sammy's Superheroes Childhood Cancer Night. This has become a fan favorite night with kid captains and raffle items with a portion of ticket sales going directly to the foundation. The Omaha Stockman Home Opener and Sammy's Superheroes Childhood Cancer Night, April 27th at 7 at Ralston Stadium. I want to learn how to cook, but I keep ordering takeout. I plan to rearrange my closet, but I stopped after picking the clothes up off the floor. Accomplishing goals is hard, but when your goal is to learn a new language, Babbel makes it easy. In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel's award-winning language learning app will help you start speaking another language. Start having conversations in as little as three weeks. Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Vous êtes tout? Vous êtes tout? Babbel's bite-sized lessons make it easy to learn words and phrases you'll actually use. So when someone asks, How's your French going? You can say, Babbel est amusant et facilite grandement l'apprentissage d'une nouvelle langue. Et cela ne prend que 15 minutes par jour. When you want to really learn another language, it starts with Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. Just go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to Hims.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, 
and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop tickets for less.com. K-O-Z-N Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. <laughs> And now we've reached the point in the show where Josh Otson reads the peculiar, the bizarre, the comical, the odd news with odd son. Odd news, odd son. See what we did there? The odd news with odd son. All right, I got my map up. Winter, South Dakota. Uh, Stop me when you've heard of this South Dakota town. Oh, gosh. All right. Uh, Let's see. Chamberlain. You're to Chamberlain, South Dakota. That's a pretty big one. Um, I don't know either way. So that feels like a no. Yeah. Murdo. Murdo. I know you're a big Murdo guy. No. Big Murdo guy. Um. Uh, Pierre, Pierre, South Dakota. Yeah, yeah. It's not close to that, <laughs> but that's the closest one that I can find that okay. I've heard of. Okay. Uh, Chamberlain. People have heard of Chamberlain, so that's off of. There's all the towns off of Interstate 90 when you go, you know, east to west across the state. Winter is quite a ways south of Interstate 90, south and west of Chamberlain, South Dakota south and east of Murdo. And then you start to get into the Black Hills once you get up to, uh, you know, the uh, the Rapid City area. You know, towns like uh, Box Elder. I've heard of that one. Really? Yeah. Sturgis? Uh, I've heard of that one. Spearfish? No. Really? Never heard of Spearfish? No. Spearfish is a great little town. What's Spearfish, their claim to fame? Deadwood? I don't know. It's just cool. Okay. I've been I've been to a wedding up in Spearfish. Oh wow, very nice, very nice. Long drive, like nine hours. Mm. It feels like a ripoff when you drive nine hours and you're still in South Dakota. <laughs> it does, yeah, I bet. Yeah, and then you just go a couple, you know, maybe another hour or two, and then all of a sudden you're in Montana, and then it feels like you've actually done something. All right. Uh, anyway, enough on uh, South Dakota geography. To the odd news. We Josh. can always go back to it. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. There's we, more there's more to chew on there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh we begin with uh star of John Wick three, uh Boban. Oh yeah. I thought you were gonna say <laughs> Keanu Reeves. No, no. Okay. I mean, many people would consider him the star, but uh Boban was in it. Let's go. Bo- Boban did a great thing last night. He did uh last uh, game of the regular season yesterday and he drew the crowd into a frenzy at the crypto.com arena uh if you don't know boban is a current member of the houston rockets they were playing the los angeles clippers yesterday last game for the clippers at crypto.com uh, i See guess they'll, they'll play playoff games Toilet! There, i guess but, uh last regular season game at crypto for the clippers uh the rockets led by eight when seven foot four boban marianovic marianovic stepped to the line for a pair of free throws in the fourth quarter. After he missed the first three, the first free throw, fans began cheering, and uh, the play-by-play guy was quick to explain the situation. I will allow him to do the work here for me. Fans are getting excited here. There might potentially be some free chicken on the board if he misses the second free throw. Oh, man, free chicken on the board? Yeah, so that's why the fans are getting uh, a, little, free chicken on the board. a little frothy. Oh, they're pointing to you. They can fall on play with the crowd. Say you want crowd chicken. Is electric. Here's your job. Oh, he gave him chicken. He's a man of the people. He's a man of the people. He did that on purpose. He did. He gave out free chicken. I'd like to have, oh, he gave him free chicken as a drop on the show. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, they're running a promotion that if a player in the fourth quarter misses two consecutive free throws, uh, everybody gets free chicken. Boban realized what was happening after he missed the first one. Pretty sure he bricked that second one intentionally. Yeah, no, not that he would have necessarily for sure made the second one, Mm -hmm. but I will like before we go too far down this road, 
this is well within bounds. Well within bounds. They're yes. up big in the game. The game is almost over. The crowd can feel it. Give the people what they want. That's why Boban is there last night. Thank you. And I, I see nothing wrong with this. Just helping out the fans. Yeah, the the uh, Rockets were up eight at the time. They ended up winning by 11. They were only up eight? Okay, maybe. Uh, I thought they were up like 20. Trying to find a quick line on the game last night. Oh, cl- Rockets by four and a half. So it, it didn't affect oh. <laughs> the, the line. Yeah. Yeah, I thought is, they were a bigger. <laughs> this is fine. Okay, it's still fine. I still don't care. <laughs> uh, NBA playing games, and I don't know if you know if you heard or tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, we Make go to a big deal about the Lakers and the Pelicans. Oh yeah. Uh, we go to baseball where Buster Olney wears many hats at ESPN. He's an MLB insider, a podcast host, and a Sunday night baseball reporter. Last night, he added two more roles to his resume: detective and marriage counselor. Uh, He sprang into action after a strange situation in the bottom of the fourth inning. Last night at Dodger Stadium, Manny Machado ripped a home run and a Dodgers fan caught the ball and threw it back onto the field. Mm -hmm. But the fan didn't really throw Machado's home run ball back on the field. The ESPN camera caught him quickly removing another ball from his jacket pocket and tossing that one onto the field. Uh, The Machado prize stayed hidden in his glove. That's the kind of scenario that demands an investigation, and Buster Olney quickly arrived on the scene. He's going to tell us a story of the old switcheroo. He made great plans for this, Olney said. Uh, The fan explained that if he didn't throw the ball back, Dodgers fans around him would be unhappy, but he didn't want to part with the ball. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, Nobody in the stands called me out for the switcheroo. Everybody high-fived me and was happy I threw it back. The telecast seems to be the only people who noticed, the fan said. Uh, only asked, what are you going to do with the baseball? He said, I'm definitely going to keep it. My wife won't like it because I try to collect baseballs a lot and I have too many as it is, but this one's for sure going on my mantle. Yeah. You got to keep the one that you caught and it's awesome. Uh, it's, it's a pro move. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen it before. Um, this guy's just following a long lineage of, of things like this happening at baseball games. Um, and it's a great job by Buster only to, to jump on the scene there. That's what sideline porting is the, mm-hmm. reporting is there for. Uh, well, Carl Ravitch at this point in time busted in and said the wrong thing. Well, <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, uh, Carl. He, he told, he asked Buster to say, Hey, why, why is, why is the wife mad at you? You know, he wanted to dig deep on this relationship issue. So Buster asked the question, why is your wife mad at you? To which the fan replied, um, we don't have enough time on the telecast to talk about that. Nice. Never, great, great response. Yeah. yeah never really got a. Much more than that, but okay. uh, yeah, interesting night on Sunday. Sunday night baseball. night baseball. I turned it on for a little bit after the Masters ended. I turned. It I didn't on. want to watch Tracker. <laughs> yeah, I turned it on for a little bit as well. They were uh, having an in-depth discussion about elbows exploding, which I found to be quite interesting. But I noticed if I was a Padres or a Dodgers fan, those were the two teams playing on Sunday night baseball last night. I would have been so triggered because they didn't bother to call a single second of the action that was happening in front of them. Yeah, it's all mic'd up stuff it, and not talking about things that are going on in the game. Yeah, it's like it's, uh, the game's going on right in front of you. It's, yeah. it's a pretty close game. ESPN's baseball product. It's it's odd. It's. It was a good conversation. Like they were talking to like a, a doctor who's a, like a leading expert in his field about UCL injuries. Like it was actually really interesting stuff, but they could have done that at any point in time. Well, the, yeah. Like if you're going to, if you're going to do that, if that's going to be your model for broadcasting a baseball game, then why not put the Royals and the Mets on there? Like yeah. why, why not right. put bad teams on? There? Yeah. Why do we have to do the Dodgers every single game? Mm-hmm. Why do we have to do the Yankees every single game? Anyway. Uh, finally, we have an update on John Wayne Bobbitt. John Wayne Bobbitt, really yes. interesting. Uh, Connor, are you familiar with the original story of John Wayne Bobbitt from 1993? Uh, well, he's the guy. Um, what did he wait? What did, what did he do? Uh, he was, uh, you know, stepping out on his wife. Yeah, behind her back. But what she, she found out? This all played out in, in the public eye, right? Yeah, she cut it off when she found out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she threw it on the front lawn. That's why he's famous. Yeah, that's why he's famous. Well, um, 
over the weekend, John Wayne Bobbitt had another body part cut off. Oh. His toes. All of them? Uh, he lost um, a, lot, a, a lot of his toes. Okay. On one foot after being exposed to contaminated water at a military training facility in the late 80s. Oh, the Camp Lejeune thing. Yeah, yeah. I always see the TV. Uh, if you if you were at Camp Lejeune, you know. <laughs> yeah, that. Oh, wow. He actually had that. Wow. He did. Uh, he's a former Marine. Uh, the harrowing condition causes nerve damage to the extremities and have caused uh, Bobbitt to have all his toes amputated over the years, the last of which were removed in 2023. Oh, so but, they're all gone. Uh, yeah. He's, go- he's blank feet. He's he's toeless, yes. Okay. I've always wondered how that would work. He has two, uh, what this article is calling uh, rather insensitively, mind you, raw stumps for feet. Yeah, plank feet. Uh, a limp and needing a special prosthetic. Uh, he revealed in a recent interview with the U.S. Sun, which is probably why we're talking about it right now. Um, just, just interesting, the... The life of John Wayne Bobbitt yep. and the things he's had cut off of his yep. body. He's got a lot of stuff that he was born with that he doesn't have anymore. <laughs> That's right. Interesting. That's right. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Connor. That is the odd news, and it was odd indeed. That's right. Uh, Brian, by the way, on the text line on Boban. Hi, Brian. He says, up eight with four minutes left. It's not over. However, both teams were locked in their spots, and the game didn't really matter. Yeah. There you go. Also, I don't care. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Boban, for giving the fans what they want. He's a man of the people. Free chicken. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Free. It's chicken. It's fried chicken, yeah. as that one kid once said. <laughs> All right, I have, a, I have a topic for you coming back. Okay. Um, a former Husker is currently dominating the UFL. That's not the topic. Oh, the, the, okay. It is about him, though. Oh, there was just a quite a collision in this Red Sox game. 42's down on the ground. <laughs> it's Jackie Robinson Day across Major League Baseball. Oh, but somebody scored. Look at that. Yeah, they hit a home run on okay. the previous at bat. Uh, but yeah, we, we got we got quite the collision out in left center field. Well, that guy's I think out cold. There are bodies everywhere. Is that Devers? All right. Anyway, we'll come back. We'll clean that up. Let's talk about Adrian Martinez. All right, you guys need to get your get your act straight. Get your story straight with this guy. Next on sixteen twenty the zone. Live from the host coffee studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Guys, let's have a conversation. Let's say you've been losing interest in your spouse. You got low libido. You can't focus on things. And you're wondering, what is going on? It may be low testosterone. Mentality is here for you. With their FDA-approved testosterone treatment, their board-certified physicians who work with most insurance companies, they can diagnose the symptoms of low testosterone and take care of it. Schedule an appointment today. Go to the website, lowtusa.com. Take back your life, men. Mentality, lowtusa.com. You go into your shower feeling, but as soon as you reach for the Irish Spring, your day immediately gets better. That crisp, fresh, unmistakable Irish Spring scent zings your brain and awakens your senses. So when you finally emerge from the shower, 37 minutes later, because you pay the water bill so you can stay in there as long as you want, you're ready to take on the day and smell great doing it. Irish Spring Body Wash and Bar Soap. Fresh, green, Irish. Shop now at Walmart. Free. Who doesn't love free? With Milo's Rewards, you get the member-only treatment that's actually worth it. Enjoy free member gifts you'll love. And once you reach Silver Key status, you can get free standard shipping. Because Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash Milo's Rewards today. Program subject to terms and conditions. See Lowe's.com slash terms for details. Member gifts may be subject to additional terms and restrictions. See Lowe's.com slash shipping terms for details. Subject to change. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Not one based on Carol. She's more focused on hitting a high note than the car in front of her. Why pay a rate based on anyone else? 
Get one based on you with DriveWise from Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California. Subject to terms and conditions. Rates are determined by several factors, which vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for purposes of rating. While in some states, your rate could increase with high-risk driving. Generally, safer drivers will save with DriveWise. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates Northbrook, Illinois. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Equitableonline.com. Josh, it was just last week on the crossover. I think we were wondering when the next 30 for 30 was going to be. Right after it came up after OJ died. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks to Charles for the heads up on this on uh, the Equitable Bank inbox. I've and, seen this floating around today. Yes, yeah, so this has been officially announced now by ESPN. Uh, they are greenlighting a Stuart Scott 30 for 30. I'm interested. That'll be good. You'll get a lot of ESPN people to talk. And, Indeed. And so you talk about how much they hate ESPN, but love Stuart Scott. Love Stuart Scott. And, you know, it, there was quite a bit of backlash from the suits at ESPN over Stuart Scott's style when he started. Indeed. Indeed. So there'll be a conversation about that for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's currently in production. The film tells the story of the trailblazing broadcaster who shattered preconceived notions on how on-air figures were expected to look, talk, act, think, and in the process helped bring hip-hop and black culture into sports media mainstream. Scott entered the sports journalism world determined to remain authentic and quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with. He drew admirers and critics for his unique style and un- un- enlivening his broadcast with references to hip-hop and other black cultural tux- touchstones. There you go. Debu- debut this one in the summer after the uh, the ESPYs or something like after that? After the College World Series, every game. <laughs> Carl Ravage says, let me send it over to the Stuart Scott 30 for 30. Right, all that was actually right, so that wouldn't have been what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... Yeah, you're just yeah, you're just yeah. going with what that's, you're given. That's all. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. all. Adrian Martinez is the quarterback of the uh, Birmingham Stallions. Josh, people forget we we at this show deeply care about the UFL and all things UFL. So we, I'm sure, we're all watching over the weekend when Adrian Martinez went 18 for 28 for 334 yards and two touchdowns, along with five carries for 44 yards and a touchdown Good as the, the Birmingham office. Stallions beat the Memphis Showboats. I'm sure you were watching. I'm sure you care. But I did see a lot of a lot of people afterwards saying, yes, Adrian, yes, we love him. We love him. We love him. He's so great, and he's one of us. Birmingham's 3-0, and only undefeated team in the league. So Adrian, I think, started as the backup, and I, the other guy got hurt. I mean, he basically wally pipped the other guy. I don't I, know who it was. I believe this is correct, yes. Yeah, so he's. Uh, I think Adrian's the guy now. Or at least he should be after doing that. He was really good. I saw the highlights. I mean, uh, made some really tough throws. Couple classic Adrian runs. Um, it was it was vintage Adrian Martinez. So I have these questions for you. I'd like to confront you with something, Husker fans. First of all, why are you so obsessed? Why are you so obsessed with Adrian Martinez? Matt Corral, the other quarterback. I think I know. I think I know the answer to why are you so obsessed with Adrian Martinez. And I'm going to explain it to you 
And I want to hear it from you, too. I want you to admit something to me. All right? Now, this is all revisionist history. But I was saying it the entire time, and I was yelled at. All right? Here's what I think. Why you get, why why we love Adrian Martinez so much, and why we maybe if we don't love Adrian Martinez so much, at least we care about his day to day doings. Oh man, he got cut by the Lions. Oh, he's gonna go be the backup quarterback in the Birmingham Stallions. Oh, he's gonna be the starting quarterback. Like all that stuff was in the in our in our purview around here, and I think I know why. But it would take an admission of some sort by by you all. So let's see if you if you're man enough to do it. Because you're obsessed with him because you know that he was full of untapped potential, wasted by a bad head coach, and lack of playmakers around him. And so I ask you this. Are you ready to admit you were wrong about Adrian Martinez and that it wasn't all his fault and that it was the head coach's fault? Or, I mean, it all falls on the head coach eventually. but both the head coach and his lack of ability to put people around him and put Adrian in a position to have success. Various different plans with the offense and all, how it all fell on him in his sophomore year in 2019. Because I thought it was all his fault. At least that, that's what I was told. Adrian can't do this. Adrian can't do that. He's just bad. They have to bench him. They have to put in Poop McCaffrey who also was not a quarterback. That's sorry, that was just what I called him at the time when he was when he was playing quarterback. He's actually a pretty good player it turns out. Just not a quarterback. We have to do anything else, but don't play Adrian Martinez. Are you ready to admit that you are wrong and that he was indeed full of untapped potential, unrealized by a horrible head coach? And his lack of plan and his lack of awareness and his lack of putting things around him and all the other things with Scott Frost. Would you like to admit it? I, no, I think this is spot on analysis by you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to admit it? Let's see. Let's see what we have from the text line. Hmm. Uh, Swift says, I'm with you, Hat, but I think I was one of the few in Adrian's corner. Okay. If you're with me in Adrian Corner, then you shoulder none of the blame in this conversation, and you are exempt. Thank you. It's okay to Thank be honest. Swift. It's okay to be honest. It's okay to be honest. It's over. Yeah. It's over. This doesn't do anything. I'm not, I'm not counting against you. In fact, I will give you points if you say, you know what? I was mad that he went to K-State. You know what? You like? If you tell me right now, you know what? You're right. I put everything on his shoulders. It didn't deserve to be. It, in hindsight, turns out that the head coach during that time, who I defended staunchly, just sucked. It's great. Now is the mm -hmm. time. Yep. Now is the time to admit it. Uh, here is from uh, Chris in Montana. Hello, Chris. I never blame Adrian for one minute. Frost and Mario were knuckleheads and blew an opportunity with a potentially generational quarterback. That seems maybe a little strong, but like, yeah, he, he, I think he would, could have been a really good player in college. Um, Jeff says on, on answering the question, why are we so obsessed with them? It's what could have and should have been held back by coaching and talent. Okay. If that's, if that's the reason why, then I agree with you. I agree with you. I think, I think that is the, um, He's become somewhat of a, like, he, he's kind of a household name. And now I find it interesting that people are just, like, taking responsibility. It's like, yeah, he's a Husker. He's a Husker. He was always a Husker. And he played at K-State that one year. And I don't know. Like, I don't know. We, we, have, we have a very interesting relationship with that guy in particular. A lot of revisionist history going on. Everybody agreed unanimously that he's a great kid. And, um, you know, he'd tell you the truth. and like super responsible for his actions and like was probably way more in a, of an adult than his head coach, whether it was during his career or after his, his career, there's been no dirty, dirty laundry aired on Adrian Martinez. Like it's all, it's all good stuff from his camp. Um, and that was the, like, that was the preeminent 
argument during the Scott Frost, Adrian Martinez era. Whose fault is it? Is it Scott Frost or is it Adrian Martinez's? Or I mean, obviously, it's a combination of both. Guys got to be able to make the throws, whatever it is. But I think we could all admit now that we're post Adrian Martinez and and now he's having some success at the professional ranks, although at the you know not the NFL level, that um, maybe maybe. You can admit that he was not necessarily put in the best position by the coaching staff that he has here. I, and in that, from that regard, like this is why I still have an attachment to him. It's because I feel bad for him. I feel really bad for him. I feel bad that he had to waste his entire college career without a plan. I feel bad that he looked like it, like a he could have been one of Nebraska's most dynamic quarterback in a perfect fit offensively for him had a great freshman year, and never got better. I feel horrible about that. Like, I feel it weirdly, like, almost responsible for that in some in some weird way, shape, or form. He hung around through a lot of crap. He did. He, he got a lot of the crap hurled and slung at him. He broke his jaw. He, had, he played with his jaw wired shut. People forget. That was crazy. The coach said he had lupus. He didn't have that. <laughs> his, he just broke his jaw. That's all. Text from the 402. Hi, 402. I think you are correct, but it's also because Adrian is such a good person. I think that factors into it as well. Mm-hmm. That, that also factors into the idea that I just feel bad for him. And so we're like, my, my natural human response here is, wow, I'm so happy for you. Like, I am <laughs> so happy that you were not permanently ruined by your experience at Nebraska. When it seemed like for a little bit at his time at K-State, he kind of was permanently ruined by his time in Nebraska. Oh, boy, Josh. Don't look at your other computer right now. Oh. That is not that is not good. Oh, my. Look at that. Wow. That, is a, that is a sad smiley face on Mr. Next Gen here. <laughs> oh, somebody's doing something to fix it. I don't think you know that. I don't <laughs> okay. think we could well, take a break right now, well, even if we wanted to. No, no. Awesome. Great. Jace Gertad writes in. Hi, Jace Gertad. All right, so this is the first I've heard from the other side, I think. The coaches didn't fumble the football. Great kid, limited on what was around him, but he still made mistakes. No doubt about it. Like, he still made mistakes. Coaches didn't fumble the football for him. Um, but I think we could all agree now in the, uh, in the aftermath of that entire thing as we've seen it all play out and we've seen where some of those people have ended up and what they've done, like, that kind of tells the story of it. And um, like at, <laughs> at the very least, there was a lot left on the table that could have been accomplished during his college career that just wasn't. I mean, he, he, he got, he literally got worse as a football player. Like, and, and that should be every, that should be every college kid's experience. Like you go to college and whatever you are, that'll reveal itself right at the beginning. And then you come out in two, three, four years, whatever it is, and you are a better player. You are a better person. You are more prepared for whether um, you're going to continue your football career or you, or life. Like you're more, you're you're just in a better position. I don't feel like that happened at the end of Adrian's time in Nebraska. I felt like he was beat up. Um, I feel like he was, um, you know, chewed up and spit out by. Nebraskans and uh, Nebraska football fans in particular. Um, and there was a lot of different things that went into that idea. And he didn't get better as a player. I feel bad. Like, I feel bad about his college experience. I and remember, so that's my, that's, that's why I always have this kind of like, oh man, I hope he does get. I remember the word traitor being thrown around quite a bit it's when tra- he went to Manhattan. Traitor Adrian. Um, John emails in on the Equitable Bank inbox. Hi, John. Yes, please. More piling on that horrible, miserable coach in person, Scott Frost. I will never stop. (laughs) That's true, John. Whenever we do end up talking about Scott Frost, you're always right there. Just waiting. All right, let's check the YouTube comments here. Uh, Here we go. Theo says, bingo. Uh, Problem was for Dusko and Frost. Media pointed fingers at 9 a.m., not just the fans. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the media did too i want to make my position clear it's, i i never felt like the coaching staff put him in a good enough position 
but obviously things were like game by game. Yeah. You got to make the throws and you know, the coaches don't fumble the football for you. Like there's, there is really easy, basic stuff that you're not doing here and that you need to get better at. But when it comes to that and you see a guy get worse week by week, you're like, well, whose fault is that? It's, I know it's not because he's not working hard. I know that's not it. We saw that. We are. We saw that. I know it's not because he doesn't care. We saw that too. So what could it be? Maybe he's just not being put in a good position. Uh, Hurt and Husker fan writes in. Hello, Hurt and Husker fan. He says, uh, is this even a hot take? I don't know. Maybe I'm a weird hybrid, but I definitely had out on Frost early, uh, and it's his fault. And Adrian had a ton of untapped potential but I was still ready for him to go to K-State at the time. Just fatigue, maybe. He was wasted and way better than he got to show. I recommended uh, my love for him actually listening to him on the evening show here. Re- recommend. I don't know if that's the right word. Maybe an autocorrect there. That's right. He was uh, the co-host of G- with the Jimmy show for a while, the after-hour show for that's a while. That's right. Until he got called to play more football. All right. Well, Josh, um, this segment's over. Sure is. Yep. Don't think we could take a break. It it sure doesn't look like it. I don't think anything would happen if you pressed F9 on the keyboard. Should I try it? I'm worried. uh, I'm worried as to what that would do. Mm -hmm. Have we contacted anybody about this? I don't know. I have not. No. Okay. Well, maybe we should. Okay. Maybe we should. Yeah, we'll get to... We'll get on that here. I don't think our bosses are in the building today. Nah, nobody works here. Um, but uh, if, any, if anybody's listening, I know it's just us two doing a show, and we're we're just trying to do a show, but if anybody's listening, uh, our our uh, computer, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Next Gen, is uh, broken, and we cannot take a break until further notice, until it is fixed. So uh, we'll just stay right here. What else is going on? How's everybody doing today? I'll just take a drink of water. Yeah. We want to go back to South Dakota geography. Why? Yeah, I mean, we we had meat left on that bone. <laughs> yeah, plenty of it. Plenty of it. Uh, you want to talk more about Ryan Gosling? Oh, or or how about this? The Caitlin Clark part of SNL. Sure, sure. I like Caitlin Clark showing up. I li- I like her when she's not, uh, when she's not playing Nebraska. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I like her when she's not playing Nebraska and I don't appreciate some of her antics while she's actually playing basketball. Uh, but I know that she's an awesome player and she's going to get drafted number one overall. How about the, um, or in the WNBA draft tonight, the, uh, the fever last night who owned the first pick in the WNBA draft tonight. And we'll be picking Caitlin Clark with said pick tweeted out last night. They uh, they warned us of a 22-hour warning until the draft started, which I thought was maybe a... Li- I don't know if that's tampering. I don't know what that is, but it does feel a little on the nose. I maybe. feel like the league's at a point where, like, yeah, we don't care. We yeah. A- a- advertise at any cost that Caitlin Clark is coming to our league. Yeah, honestly, probably where they're at. Uh, I want to take a call here in a second, but... This is a good one from Chris of Montana. Hi, Chris. You guys probably know your commercials by heart. You could do a duet of the host coffee song. Uh, and let's see, we don't have that one anymore. But see, the problem is I don't know what we have and what we don't have at the moment. I guess we could look. Let's see. What's our what's our break supposed to be? We had a uh, we had a weather update. We had a. Let's see. We had a mid- rain coming in tonight. Maybe we- some uh, rain tomorrow <laughs> good, as well. Good. Uh, that's, of course, brought to you by uh, Godfathers. Uh, Do it. We had uh, Gary for Mentality. Gary here for Mentality. We had uh, Blur Baseball. Oh, the, yeah. Baseball Village. College Baseball up. Village. Downtown, yep. the, the, the big tailgate. You'll want to be a part of it. See, this one, I can't tell what's in there. Uh, we had a Westwood One NFL Network update. Oh yeah. Uh, we had uh, John Higgins Weather Guard. The John home Higgins of the, the guard. The home of the rooferies. Make the right call. Gotta play ball. 
All right, there you go. That's our commercial break. Done. Good break. Okay, we're back. Still incapable of taking a commercial break. I I once had to do this, Josh, in my in a in a past life of mine hmm. for an entire show. Oh wow. Yeah. We did not take we did not take a break. Not a single the, one. For the entire show. I have had to do this for one commercial break. And we did reenact the commercials. Are we doing it right now? Kind no, yeah. no, no. One one other time? Yeah. One okay. previous time in my life. Uh, we got another request on what we should do if we don't get to take a break soon, and I will do that, but let's take a phone call. Okay. We're here for you guys. Here's Donnie on the 42 Degrees Source Hotline. Donnie! What's up, Donnie? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good. Good. Obviously, got technical errors. I apologize for that. It, uh, you're, you, it's never not your fault. Things don't work fault? correctly. It, unless no, it's your no, fault, Donnie. I, you should apologize, then. I, I, feel, I feel bad for you. I've dealt with uh, things very similar to that in the past, and mm. it's uh, it just kind of sucks because, you know, you're like, Hey, I could talk forever until you have to, <laughs> and then you, when you're when you're forced to do it, then you're like, oh, well, maybe I didn't have that much uh, interesting to say in the first place. Exactly. So, um, so I feel yeah, every exactly. day. So uh, Adrian Martinez, um, back in 2023, my son, who was a uh, wide receiver for the D Peru State Bobcats, was uh, luckily named to the uh, to the All State uh, Good Work team, and so we got a trip to the Sugar Bowl to go down there because you know that's the only way that uh nebraska fans can go to bowl games is to go <laughs> <with> somebody else <laughs> nice <laughs> and and so to a person the k-state fans down there were amazing absolutely amazing but w- until it came to adrian martinez they said you people are stupid why would you get rid of a quarterback this good how how jaded and how entitled are you and these are things being said to us as nebraska fans from k-state fans saying why would you let this kid go yeah. It doesn't make any sense, and it was uh, it was uh, it. He played great in that first quarter, obviously, and then uh, Alabama was Alabama. But uh, it was uh, to to a person to be shamed like that by Kansas State fans of all people. Um, I tell you what, though, Donnie, he, like what one thing here. So I like I was on the whole untapped potential thing and how bad Frost was and all that stuff. But at the end of twenty twenty one, I. Right, that would have been his last, yeah, prior to 2022. Um, at the end of 2021, I, I I did feel like it kind of made natural sense for a, a, mm-hmm. a split, um, but that was not necessarily about him. It was kind of just about the situation. Absolutely, absolutely. And and now knowing what we know now and what, what we've finally been told about what the situation was and what the rumors were and all that, I, I feel horrible for the kid that he was never truly given an option to succeed, to succeed to his fullest potential. And, and to obviously see what he's doing in pro ball now, um, it was there. It was there all the time. It just took somebody to be a professional uh, around him and, and maybe teach him the things that he didn't know. And maybe we could have you know gotten, gotten through this and maybe Scott Frost would still be coach. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it's a... It's it's a whole nother dimension that we're diving into that I really don't want to be part of, <laughs> but uh, um, and and in parting, uh, I will just uh, I'll help you with a commercial break and I'll just check the backseat. Thank Brady you. Might be back there. Don't <laughs> let <him> cook. <laughs> backseat. That's the second verse. That's the long version. And nice. uh, oh, but I think I think there's one in there too that we're supposed to be socially separating. <laughs> there's some sort of thing going on in the world. Yeah. And a WWE uh, world champion Alberto Del Rio, who hasn't been with the WWE since 2009, uh, reads books to his kids in weird voices. You must so, be a you stream there's, listener, there's Donnie. Break. Thank you. I appreciate. It. <laughs> uh he's got it. He, he's a he's a six A to six B listener. We appreciate that from Donnie reciting all of our commercials and tell us all the things that Josh recorded like four years ago that are still playing on our stream. Number 23, you know, 23's old arena. 23's old arena. Number 23 in Jordan's old arena. Uh, yeah, Johnny emails in. He says, uh, you could you could tell us all the smiles we stay six feet apart and as we get through this tough time, like the pass it on commercial. Also, <laughs> John says, as you know, I am of technology. Have you tried restarting the computer? Ooh. Unplugging it and plugging it back in. I'm too afraid. Yeah, I'm a little concerned I've about that. I've also been given no direction by anyone who works. Have you made contact with anybody? I have reached out two separate occasions. Okay. 
Is there an emergency line for this sort of thing? I don't know. Because we're kind of we're, we're kind of floating here. Yeah. The next best option might just be for you to to get up and walk around. Just pop your head out that door and start screaming. <laughs> ah! Help! <laughs> Please! That might be next. It's, we're like the Titanic. We're like Titanic Johnson right now. Go big red. Go big red. <laughs> Uh, let's get another phone call here since we're on the segment that may never end. Yeah. It's Gary on the 42 degrees of source hotline. Hi, Gary. Hey boys. What's up? Hey, Connor, one Royals fan to another Royals fan. I got a scenario that happened to me in 15 when the Royals were playing the, the Mets. And here's what happened. And you tell me if this has ever happened to you. I was watching the game. We're down three to one in the seventh or eighth inning. And my brother gives me a call and says, his friend's a scout for the White Sox, just got us two tickets to game six to go watch the World Series at Kauffman Stadium in game six. Mm -hmm. And I'm just ecstatic, jumping up and down. I'm barely watching the TV. I come back in the ninth, and it's tied three to three. And I'm like, holy crap. They go to the extra innings and get in the Royals win in extra innings and win the World Series. Am I excited? Yeah. No, but, but you're sad. You wanted to go to game six. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would have been honestly uh very, very oh. conflicted. I that 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 would be a very tough one for me. I, I'm not sure how I'd react to that. Oh, uh, I to this day I still I'm like I'll never forget it. I'm just like that could have never happened. Um, I, I think one of the things, so we went down there and thanks for the call, Gary. I appreciate, let's talk about this by the way. But one of the things that happened, um, I think we, we went, I went down the next year and I don't know, I saw, met up with maybe one of the, I don't know, however it was, or maybe we were affiliates or whatever. And they sent us a whole bunch of stuff that would have been used for game six and seven of the 15 world series. Oh, wow. So we got like a bunch of rally towels and, um, one thing I still have to this day uh, tucked away in a cigar box somewhere in my house is so, you know, so it doesn't get uh, affected by the humidity is the uh, is a, a ticket stub, a ticket for game six of the World Series that never happened that year. Oh, wow. I, I, ha- I have a physical ticket that I wouldn't have used. It wouldn't have been my ticket, but I have a ticket uh-huh. that would have been used for that night had the Royals not uh, come back and Lucas Duda hadn't thrown that ball completely wide and <laughs> Eric Hosmer wouldn't have slid into home plate and, uh, you know, Christian Cologne wouldn't have got us like all that stuff. Um, now with that being said, that's probably like for a team that hadn't won a world series in 30 years, that's the hardest way to win a world series. If you're a Royals fan, you're like, well, I, I will be going to game six and I'd be going to, to see one of the possible two chances I'd be live. I'd be there in person and watch my team win the World Series. That would be insane. Um, very emotionally conflicted. Extremely emotionally conflicted. I do not know how I would deal with that. I think I'd probably be happy. Do you think we could take a break? Oh. Uh. <laughs> you had that look in your face like, Ooh, this is something might be happening here. That was me gaining enough courage to try and hit a button. No, no. No. There ain't nothing in there. That's man. a blank screen. You man. see, like if 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 our robot computer is like a human, it'd be like seventeen beers in right now, and you see those people, and they're walking by you, and they just have nothing in their eyes. <laughs> they're dead inside. That's our computer right now. It's dead inside. There ain't nothing going on in there. It is blank. Should I turn that? Very. Should I turn that here? Let's look. Take a look at this computer, and you tell me. You tell me if that looks right. There's supposed to be stuff. <laughs> you see, you see this right stuff here. right here? Yeah. There's supposed to be stuff in there. You see this little guy up here? He's ha- he's sad. He's supposed <laughs> to be happy. That's when you know it's bad. So we're working on that, theoretically. Uh, Kenneth writes in, just Hi, tuning Kenneth. in today. Is the commercial machine broken? Yes. Literally. Yeah. You got it. You got it. Uh, 
Travis writes in, it's a segment that never ends. It goes on and on, my friends. Nice. Um, uh, by the way, uh, Jimmy, uh, uh, after our Jimmy has reached out, he said that Adrian's going to call into the show tonight, so listen to their show afterwards. So oh, okay. Hear from the the uh, the most polarizing quarterback in Nebraska football history. Mm-hmm. Is that is that a fair thing to say about Adrian? The most polarizing mm-hmm. quarterback in Nebraska football history. I mean, wouldn't Scott Frost be that? As a quarterback. As a quarterback? Okay. As, well, if Frost, w- I mean... It actually be it, it would be a pretty good tussle between quarterback Scott Frost and quarterback Adrian Martinez. Mm-hmm. Scott Frost was pretty polarizing at the time. Now we looked at it afterwards and we were like, oh, well, they split a national championship. That was pretty good. Or won a national championship, however you'd like to view it. Whatever. Whatever your worldview be. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that situation is. Uh, we got another request on a, on a thing to talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Topic alert. Uh, this is indeed a topic alert. So um, I've been told, I've been notified that there is a that there is a softball team uh, that has been that is being run by Jack Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jack Mitchell softball experience. So this is classic Jack, where he's like putting every ounce of effort and manpower he possibly has in his being to to put together this this weird thing. Um, and so there's some names in their lineup tonight, including our boss. Yes, our boss. Our boss, whose name is spelled incorrectly. A lot of people's names are spelled incorrectly. A lot of people's names are spelled incorrectly. I don't know about any of these people, many of these people athletically. Um, it feels like just on the face, it will not be a very good team. Oh, really? Yeah. Having met some most of these people, you have doubts. It feels like this team will actually suck quite a bit. Mm. Um, we have uh, we have uh, our friend Caleb from KLIN. We mm-hmm. have Jack's son. That might actually be pretty good because he's like you know nineteen or whatever. Um, we got Wilson Moore who covers the uh, Huskers for the Journal Star. We got our boss Mark. Uh, we got. Riley used to run social media for Nebraska. Cole from KLIN and Lincoln. Guest of the show, Max Olson. Guest of the show, Jacob Bigelow. Uh, Pat Norris, equipment manager for Nebraska. Uh, JP, the uh, PA guy for uh, Nebraska basketball. Um, Josh, who runs uh, Triple B uh, Printing. There's a couple of names that I don't really recognize. Um, But, um, yeah, it feels like this team will just... Amateur. Now, I say this as a person who sucks at slow pitch softball and will be playing slow pitch softball again starting this Thursday. Um, I don't think this team will be very good. Now, it also depends on what kind of league you're in, um, and you know what what division you're rolling with, and and the quality of competition around you. I know, uh, I know that they'll they'll have a group of people who try really hard which is a good thing. But outside of that, uh, it feels like, you know, you're going to have to grind, try and find a couple wins. Double headers, I would assume, on Monday nights. Maybe just one. Who knows? It's a late start for them tonight. It's like 8.30 start. Yeah. Yeah, I get my my first week is this week, too. We're supposed to start at 8.30 on Thursday, and we're supposed to have crap weather. Since this is a segment that never ends, I could just take up my phone and check the weather. Yeah, it looks gonna like it's gonna be cold on Thursday. Cold and rainy. Josh is looking around. It seems like he's he's been told something. I have been told some I've been told to restart a computer, but I want to restart the correct computer. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, you gotta restart the right computer, and then you gotta log into that computer that's, again. That's the second that challenge. That would be a yes. challenge. So we're probably looking at at least another what, five, ten minutes here? At the very least? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's good. We'll only be two breaks behind at that point, which is nice. Oh. Um, and then we'll... Oh, what? Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, there, there's some hey, movement here. I texted you. You didn't respond. I did respond. You didn't oh. respond. Yeah. I have, a, I have a text in from our boss, Mark. Y'all are doing great. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Thanks, boss. I appreciate that. Good looking photo on the socials of you today, boss. Where's he at? It's a WFH day for him. 
He's a work from home guy. He's a work from home guy today, which is fine. Which is fine. All right. Um, oh, Kenneth writes in is a hot dog a sandwich. I don't answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you for trying. Even when desperately that, reaching nope, for content. That's not something I talk about. I don't talk about that. Mm -mm. Not even I, I will sit here in silence. I don't have anything to say about that. None at all. Uh, by the way, Josh, did you see, uh, did you happen to see Delano Banton's stat line from this weekend? I did, Connor. Good. I did. I'm glad. An um, NBA record stat line. Yeah, let me let me let me read some things to you. Oh, look, we could take a break. Hmm, interesting. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Not all heroes wear capes. That seemed kind of easy. Maybe and now really I'm starting to, now I'm starting to look at you, Josh. Whoa. whoa Maybe you should have logged out and logged back into the next gen guy here. I mean, I was uh I was afraid of touching something. Someone had remoted in. Oh, okay. So I I, I didn't want to mess up their okay. attempts to fix it. All right. Uh, so we'll tell you about Delano's Banton stat line when we return, and we'll see how accurate you guys are on thinking of our commercial jingles in your head. <laughs> Coming back on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Windy and very warm for your Monday afternoon with a high today in Omaha of 86 degrees. Gusts out of the southeast up to 30 miles an hour and a red flag warning in place for some parts of eastern Nebraska, western Iowa until 7 p.m. Overnight tonight and early Tuesday morning, a chance for scattered showers and storms with a slight to enhanced risk for severe weather. Windy, a low of 63. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KUTV Newswatch 7. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source, by your mom's house. You're sitting with a couple of pals at Backlot Tap House in Exarban Village when your server brings up this perfectly cooked smash burger. The smell of a juicy beef patty sends a waft of aroma right up your nose and your eyes instinctively close because, well, awesomeness. Your friends get their orders and you just kind of look at each other and think, yeah. This is going to be good. Backlot Tap House with 30 beers on tap, happy hour every day, trivia nights, live music, and more. Exarban Village and BacklotTapHouse.com. Guys, let's have a conversation. Let's say you've been losing interest in your spouse. You got low libido. You can't focus on things. And you're wondering, what is going on? It may be low testosterone. Mentality is here for you. With their FDA-approved testosterone treatment, their board-certified physicians who work with most insurance companies, they can diagnose the symptoms of low testosterone and take care of it. Schedule an appointment today. Go to their website, lowtusa.com. Take back your life, men. Mentality, lowtusa.com. At Cox Mobile, we know you're smart. You brush your teeth in the shower to save time. <laughs> Make coffee ice cubes for your cold brew. Mm. And wear goggles to cut onions. You also added Cox Mobile. So smart. Now you're running on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability and saving on your Cox internet. It's ingenious, just like you. Oh, thanks. Cox Mobile, the smart way to mobile. Cox postpaid internet required. Cox Mobile runs on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability as measured by Ookla LLC in the U.S. to H 2023. Other restrictions apply. Learn more at cox.com slash mobile. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Did you know that radon is the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers and that our region has some of the highest levels in the country? Radon Defense Midwest can test and fix your home. Visit RadonRadio.com for an exclusive offer for 1620 The Zone listeners. That's RadonRadio.com. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramps corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramps software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. 
If your decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. I'm Chris Sylvester with NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Well, 25 teams, including the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs, kicked off voluntary workouts today. The program is conducted in three phases, with phase one consisting of activities limited to meeting, strength and conditioning, and physical rehab only. Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins requested a trade after the team placed the franchise tag on the 25-year-old this offseason with the hope of working out a long-term deal. It now appears that Higgins has had a change of heart and says he anticipates remaining with the Bengals in 2024. He told WLWT over the weekend that, quote, I've grown a love for Cincy that I didn't think I would. Patriots hold the third overall pick in the upcoming 2024 draft and hosted quarterback prospect J.J. McCarthy for a visit in Foxborough today, according to NFL Network insider Tom Pelissero. New England previously met with North Carolina's Drake May and LSU's Jaden Daniels. The draft begins Thursday, April 25th. This has been NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is, this never ends. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. 800-462-3333. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the Rooferies at John Higgins WeatherGuard. All right, welcome back from a commercial break, another one of which we'll be taking in a couple minutes before we talk to Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Uh, back to Delano Banton. So Delano Banton had some fun last night. He plays for the Portland Trailblazers now. Oh, I think he had some fun. <laughs> what happens when you miss your first four threes in an NBA game? Are you probably like, Eh, hopefully I can get, hopefully I can get the next one, right? And what happens if you start 0 for 8 from 3? You're probably like, maybe I should just slow down. Maybe tonight's not my night. Maybe I need to be a facilitator. Yep. Uh, then you're like, then you're 0 for 11. And you're like, okay, I think I'll be done. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that I'm going to shoot any more three-pointers tonight. Delano Banton checked through all of those, uh, all of those little markers, all of those little checkpoints, and got to O of fifteen last night from beyond the arc. No player in NBA history has attempted as many threes without making a single one during a game. And and Delano was so triggered at himself that he was thrown out of the game. In the fourth quarter, oh. did you see how he got thrown thrown out of the game? No. So he was playing the defense on on playing defense on a Philadelphia 76er who was driving, uh, you know, driving th- on the lane line there, and basically just shoulder shoved him. I mean, like <laughs> so blatantly, it was th- the ref was standing right there, and he was just like, "Yep, time to go." And Delano was like, "Okay, okay, thank you. I think I'll leave now." I'm glad that we- sounds like a really good idea. I'm glad we're both on the same page. Delano Banton last night, even though he shot 0 of 15 from three and had seven assists, he had 17 points on six of 26 shooting. He took 26 shots. Over the last two games, Delano's volume has been unbelievable. To go along with his 26 shots last night, he also had 26 shots in the game before that. That makes 52 attempts in two games. 
for Delano Benton, who is basically playing the role of late stage Kobe Bryant at this point. <laughs> he has made 15 field goals out of his 52 attempts in the last two games, and he has shot two for 25 from three point range. Just a just unable to find that right that right touch from uh, from three point land. I saw that Dion Waiters meme a lot last night. It was a good. It's a. It's it's an apt one. If, that's for sure. I'd rather go zero for thirty than zero for nine because you go zero for nine. That means you stopped shooting. That means you lost confidence. Now the trail bra- Trailblazers. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Did not make the play in right. No. So they're twenty one and sixty one. That are we sure that's not good enough to make a playoff game? I. I, I are we sure? sure? Yes, I believe it was. Yes, it was worst in the conference. Damn it. How close were they? <laughs> uh 25 games out of the play in. I thought that I thought that it would be closer. Just just to give me an opportunity <laughs> to make fun of the NBA one more time. Only five teams in each conference do not make the playoffs, play ins, playoffs. So the Hawks are the 10 seed. So they'll be in the play in round with the Sixers, and then they're gonna win another one. Oh my gosh, I just looked at the record. The Hawks record is 36 and 46. So if the Blazers were in the East, blaze it, uh, they'd be only what? Uh, 15. 15 games out? Yeah. Getting closer, Josh. Mm-hmm. Getting closer. The Spurs with Victor Wembinyama won 22 games this year. But they did have Victor Wembanyama. That much is true. Josh, without looking, now you're. I think you're looking. Probably you're looking at it right now. I'll stop. Can you name all the all the playoff teams in the West? God. Can you name Can you name the top four seeds in the West? Thunder. Yes. Nuggets. Yes. The team that was really hot that nobody should believe in. Clippers. No, the other one. They're they're the fourth one. Oh, oh, uh, Minnesota. Yeah, that's correct. Minnesota. Yes. Yeah. You can get that on your Bally Sports Plus subscription, by the way. Um, and in the uh, in the Eastern Conference, can you name the top four seeds? This this is surprising even to me. This is the first time I've ever looked at this. I, I only know this because it's so weird. Uh, Celtics. Yes. Uh, Knicks finished second. Indeed, they did. Uh, Bucks. Indeed. And then the Cleveland Cavaliers finished fourth. And then the Orlando Magic Orlando are your Magic, five seed. Orlando Magic. Uh, then the Pacers are yeah. six. Philly is seven with Joel Embiid. Interesting. Weird. Heat MVP col- candidate. Heat culture, number eight. Watch out. Don't the wanna, Bulls. Don't play them. The Bulls got a token playoff spot. They're four games under 500, and they were the team who tried to throw an alley oop off the backboard to themselves and ended up not getting anything out of it. And then the Hawks. Or ten games under five hundred, they'll have a chance to have a full, real playoff series. Great job by them. Giannis doubtful for game one. Bucks Pacers. Uh, is this still his weird Achilles deal? Yeah, Achilles kind of Achilles adjacent. Uh, Jeff writes in on the text line. Hi Jeff. Good job hitting your weekly quota on dunking on Nebraska ball. No, we already talked about how we're so happy for Casey Tomonaga yeah. and his engagement. That gives us one to dunk on yeah we, we get a free one yeah <laughs> come on don't you, you know how this you works guys know the rules we get a free one we said one positive thing so we get to dunk on them pro big red <laughs> delano benton i i think i mean it's funny like he's everyone knows that delano is gonna be like he's he's an interesting nba mm. player he set an nba record no, but like what i'm saying is he is good and so it's okay to make fun of him if he has a real crappy game. The last game of the year, which I'm going to bet that the Portland Everybody Trail wants to Blazers go home. don't care about. Yeah, exactly. Everybody wants to go home. Yeah. And so I think that's our that's our pro big red for the week. Up until this point, he had been doing quite well. A lot of people had he he got traded to Portland this year, and a lot of people yes. were very pleasantly surprised I, with his like, production. I'm, in, I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'm intrigued by Delano Benton. So I think that was a free one, Josh. I, I wouldn't feel any shame in that. Hot Danger on YouTube. Hi, Hot Danger. Uh, feel free to talk about the numerous Creighton players who have washed out in the NBA. Did you see Kyle Korver and Doug McDermott 
talking with each other before they played last night. Oh no, I didn't. They were they they were handshake meme, but in real life, wow. they were handshake real lifing. That's what they call it now, right? Remember Anthony Tolliver? Anthony Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Only on the video board at Creighton Games doing an advertisement for that one company. Uh, Chris in Montana. Hi, Chris. Let's see. Uh, speaking of Kesa, I think you'd make an excellent globetrotter. You know, that's come up a couple of times. A couple like of people have suggested this. Yeah. Uh, Jeff says, by the way, I will wait to hear from you when Trey Alexander has a bad game in the G League. Oh, no, we're, we're, we'll make fun of the Jays, too. We make fun of all things that are available to be made fun of. If somebody, Nobody is safe on this yeah, show. If somebody local does something stupid, you're going to hear about it. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, Hot Danger follows up. He says, where's Zagorowski? Where's Justin Patton? Well, they're not in the NBA for us to make fun of. They're sitting on their couches. Or playing somewhere overseas. Possibly. The little man's good. He just missed 15 threes. It's funny. Get a <laughs> sense of humor, guys. Give me a break. Marcus Zegger. Now you triggered me. <laughs> I didn't think this was I didn't think anybody would be offended by this. Who who in their right mind would be offended by this? Imagine caping up for Delano Band. He's he's good. Everyone knows he's good. It's funny. It's objectively funny that any person, rather w- whether they played at Nebraska or Creighton or anywhere in college, missed. 15 threes in a game. Literally no one in the NBA has ever done that before without making a single one. The one guy. It's funny. Give it, get a sense of humor. Damn it. <laughs> I'm with Connor on this one. Sam is next on 1620 The Zone. But first, a reminder from the FanDuel Sportsbook. Perfect. The NBA play-in tournament, which doesn't include the Portland Trailblazers, so we don't have to talk about Delano Banton during this FanDuel Sportsbook read. It's great. There are several teams in the NBA play-in tournament, and none of them deserve to be in the playoffs. But guess what? You can bet on it with the FanDuel Sportsbook, and it seems right that new customers on FanDuel could play their way into $150. Bucks. Just place any $5 bet, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed win or lose to use during the NBA playoffs, the real NBA playoffs, which starts when the Nuggets play. So you could bet on Delano Banton to miss every shot if he were in there, if you wanted to. Or you could bet on him to make every shot. But you, if you did that, you wouldn't lose because it's bonus bets guaranteed. It's beautiful. It's foolproof. For the FanDuel Sportsbook, head to FanDuel.com slash Apper and get started. FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 and over, present in Iowa, first online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now with drawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fandle.com. The only problem call 1 800 bets off. Live from the host coffee studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Lula B's Breakfast, Brunch, and Bar is downtown Omaha's go-to spot for great food with a Mexican flair. Lula B's has everything from French toast and omelets to shrimp tacos and burgers. There's even a full bar with uniquely inspired spring fling cocktails. Want to have a party? Lula B's has a party room that seats up to 65 of your favorite people with custom catering available. Book for graduation parties, family events, bridal celebrations, or just brunch with all your friends. Lula B's, 9th and Dodge, or at lulabsomaha.com. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. Spring is sprung, and you know what? You need to look good. You need to get your fit looking like rad. And Lily Clothing and Well Suited can take care of you because you got prom, you got graduation, you got weddings, and you need to look your best. And you can look your best right now. Why rent a suit? Buy a suit. And you know what? You can get a suit for as little as that. $199 $199 at Lily Clothing and Well Suited in the London Market, 132nd and West Dodge. Take care of yourself now. Why rent when you can buy this season at Lily Clothing and Well Suited? Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Since 1972, family owned and locally roasted Host Coffee Service has been roasting the finest coffee for businesses and restaurants. 
If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Lula B's Breakfast, Brunch, and Bar is downtown Omaha's go-to spot for great food with a Mexican flair. Lula B's has everything from French toast and omelets to shrimp tacos and burgers. There's even a full bar with uniquely inspired spring fling cocktails. Want to have a party? Lula B's has a party room that seats up to 65 of your favorite people with custom catering available. Book for graduation parties, family events, bridal celebrations, or just brunch with all your friends. Lula B's, 9th and Dodge, or at lulabsomaha.com. Whether you own a local business or a global one, you know that these days, generating growth is a challenge. By teaming with Bank of America, you'll not just stay ahead of the curve, you'll move it. With access to experts, award-winning insights, and business solutions so powerful, you'll make every move matter, locally and globally. Visit bankofamerica.com slash banking for business to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Copyright 2024, Bank of America N.A. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. All right, we're joined now on the 42 Degrees of Source hotline by Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Sam, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, man? Uh, Sam, I'm good. I know you're a you're a you're a movie goer. Uh, I'll tell you that I haven't seen a movie in the theaters in a in in quite some time now. But I am interested in the Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, uh, stuntman movie that they were promoting on Saturday Night Live on, on Saturday night. I, that might get me back out to the movies. Okay, that's good. Ryan Gosling, he's he's better when he's funny. I agree. I very much agree, and he has the range to do it all. He does, and so he was in a movie a couple of years ago called The Nice Guys. That was good. Yes. Uh, this this feels a little bit like that. Only um, instead of Russell Crowe, it's Emily Blunt, and it's sort of I don't know. I think it's a romantic comedy too, but uh, it looks pretty good. He's better again. He's better when he's funny. I'm with you. Did, did you watch? Did you serious. watch him on SNL on Saturday? So. You know, the way that I consume SNL is the way a lot of people do, which is on social media. Yeah. And so I probably watched about 15 minutes of skits, but I didn't see it end to end. Um, so I watched the Caitlin Clark thing, but then I also watched the Beavis and Butthead skit. <laughs> so, and this, the Beavis and Butthead thing was good. The Caitlin Clark thing was just okay. It was a little awkward. Yeah. Um, and everybody that I talked to thought she was wearing a Nebraska jacket. And I'm like, <laughs> Somebody at Nike might want to create a slightly different emblem there. Yeah. You know, like, how about a swoosh? Everybody knows what that is. I don't really think they know what the letter jacket. Was that is. was that like, like Nike's logo? Was that Nike's logo before they got the swoosh? I, I don't even get what there was a reference to. My understanding of Nike is that the Hermes that swoosh thing was right at the beginning um, from a track coach, but I don't know. It, just, it looked like she was wearing a Nebraska letter it jacket, did. and I'm sure it was a pretty. Even though she she strikes, she's actually a pretty guileless person. I don't think she probably looked at the jacket and was like, "Oh my god, it looks like Nebraska." She probably didn't even pay any attention to that. But when she went on the TV, I was I got a text from somebody saying like, "Why is Caitlin Clark wearing a Nebraska jacket?" I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, "That's Nike," and it's just Nike had a bad. Or a Lincoln Northeast jacket. Like, that looked like a Lincoln Northeast letter jacket. It did. It, it did. It was It was very <laughs> odd. She was, she was okay. I, I was mildly surprised when they actually rolled her out. And I, I thought it was just going to be somebody acting like her. And then at the end, you know, she's standing up there with Ryan Gosling and all the celebrities and everybody. And she's there with her Iowa teammates, too. She's bringing everybody along for the ride. Yeah, she, she, um, she's not quite as famous as Ryan Gosling. She's close. Yeah. She's real close. Yeah. I'm I, not kidding. No, I know. I she's she's a superstar. Twenty million people watch that national title game. So you know, or twenty million people watching a Ryan Gosselin movie? No. Because <laughs> if they were, that movie would make a hundred and forty million yeah. first weekend. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> or two hundred million. I don't know. That's, so she's pretty famous. Hey, let me ask you this open ended because this is something that came up on our show last week. Um, you mentioned the twenty million people watching the national championship game. I'll just open it up to you this way. Why? Why is she so popular? Like we've we've seen really good women's college basketball players. Why is she the one that has drawn all of this interest and attention? Some of it is her style. Um, so you know, like she shoots three pointers from the same distance that Steph Curry and Damian Lillard do, and that gets your attention right away. Like she, you know, those 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 are unique visually. They're fun to watch. Um, that's that's some of it. Uh, I think some of it is that. People are drawn to somebody who didn't go play for one of the power schools. And she could have. Um, I don't know if Connecticut would have taken her because her and Paige Beckers are similar. And so I don't know that Gino R.E.M. is all that interested in, in having the same player at two different positions. But she could have gone anywhere else. And she went to Iowa. And I think that's a compelling story in its own way. Whether that's compelling to ESPN or to all the former UConn players that are on ESPN commentating is mm-hmm. not material to what the American public wants to watch. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think that, you know, there's a there's a certain component. You have to give Fox a little bit of credit here. So ESPN lost control of all of Caitlin Clark's games for, for three months. And had ESPN controlled those, I have to be honest with you, I, I think ESPN would have would have probably tried to um, equate or equate her with other players, and would have tried to balance the coverage out. Whereas Fox had no no qualm whatsoever with putting Caitlin Clark in every yep. major TV spot it could, and that I think generated a a powerful following. <laughs> over the course of however many whatever. And, um, so CBS and Fox got their cracks at Caitlin Clark way before ESPN got, you know, got to get back into it. And then by the time that ESPN got there, well, then they understood they couldn't, they couldn't just treat Caitlin Clark like Ace Beckers or Juju Watkins. And believe me, the analysts tried. They tried very hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that the, you know, the producers at ESPN understood what they had. And so I think it's, a, it's an amalgamation of things. And then, you know, I think she's a, she's kind of a compelling and divisive figure. You know, like there's people who watch her and they don't like her. There's people who watch her and do. And so anytime you have somebody who's a little bit of a lightning rod, um, you know, that, that, that compels people to watch. And I don't, you know, the, the ratings aren't going to be the same next year, almost certainly, uh, because Caitlin Clark is a unique figure in uh, the history of women's college basketball and, and, you know, they're going to get a great rating tonight for the WNBA draft. Yep. And they're going to get good ratings this summer. The question is whether the WNBA can, you know, can take advantage of that, whether it understands the opportunity it has. And, and I'm not sure that it does. I, I don't know. The, the WNBA needs to. There's no uh, way that they, they can grasp exactly what they're walking into yet. Well, like the WNBA needs to call its games, officiate its games in a way that, commensurate with scoring and the WNBA is a very hard league to make and it's a very talented league it's, it's a pretty defensive league a lot of the players are elite defenders it's pretty physical um, and so you know the thing that you'll have to watch is if Kalen Clark's only scoring 16 17 points a game which by the way many of the top scorers in the WNBA only score 16 or 17 points a game mm-hmm. it's going to diminish your impact pretty quickly and so they've got to figure out a way to I know people are critical of the way that the NBA has opened up its scoring and it's almost made it too easy, but it, it, it does a, it does add to the appeal of the sport when, when guys can go off, when you have 15 guys in the league that can score 50 points and maybe they've got, they've tilted the NBA too far in that direction, but it's kind of cool to be able to say, well, Carl Anthony Towns went for 60 and this guy over here went for 50 and Jalen Brunson dropped 51 and lost and all these other things that people are able to do. That's part of what makes the NBA compelling, and I think the WNBA is going to have to make that adjustment eventually, where they're going to have to say, "Hey, we need we need to put a greater premium on scoring, or otherwise, we're going to take the greatest score in the history of women's college basketball and turn her into a 16 point a game score." And that's 
that's just not what people want to see. No, not at all. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald is with us. Uh, Nebraska football for you, Sam. We uh, I laid this out earlier in the show, and I was talking about sort of how ne- Nebraska's kind of outward-facing approach to the spring is yeah. um, they're like they're just practicing. You know, and we we saw that the the video from Saturday's scrimmage, which uh, included one throw from each of the quarterbacks, and it doesn't feel like they're trying to make any statements about anything. There's not, you know, a whole lot of uh, hot and heavy conversations about uh, who's going to be starting where, even though there's intrigue there, like there's position battles all over. I I find their approach to this um, to be both pretty refreshing and practically like you know, it functionally important for, for where the team is at right now as they as they try and, you know, get everything together and, and head into the important stuff in the in the fall. Oh sure. Yeah, I mean, um you know, it's 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 kind of a boring spring, if we're gonna be honest yeah. with you. Um that's not bad that, though. You know, no, it's not bad. If the team had won seven and five next last year, it would probably be more exciting because They'd be coming off of, of the kind of improvement that makes you think they could be a potential top 25 team this year. They're not going to be a preseason top 25 team. They're just not. That's not going to happen. And largely because they went five and seven. Uh, and so, you know, there would be something that would be more exciting in that regard. But otherwise, it's pretty boring. You got a lot of the same guys talking. They're saying a lot of the same things. And you know, Matt Rule does a pretty good job of laying out his vision and all that, but I don't think that there's a ton of, you know, new information to him for him to impart. Uh, you know, I, they've got some newcomers there that are making an impact, but it's not everybody, and you know, all the rest, all the things that you want to say. And so this is kind of where things are at. Uh, kind of expected that going into this particular spring camp. Uh, not not terribly surprised. I actually won't be there for practice tomorrow. I think even Thursday, I'm going to, that's more managerial things I want to get done and a lot of planning for the summer. So you'll, you'll see some other writers down there, which is good. Like I, I yeah. think getting a fresh pair of eyes on, it'll be fun for some of those folks, but I have a pretty good grasp. I, I actually think I have a very good grasp of where the program is right at this moment. Um, I try to spend a lot of this spring learning about relearning the big 10 teams that they're going to face and the dynamics that are within those programs. And I got to be honest with you, I think Nebraska is in good shape. Now they still got to go out and do it, um, but I like a lot of the the interior dynamics of the program compared to some of the stuff that's going on in other places. Um, the biggest question mark, as everybody's talked about, is just can the quarterback be a stable position? And if they can get stability out of that position, it doesn't have to be elite. It has to be stable. They have a chance to have a really good team if they can just get stability out of that position, which is which can be a lot to ask from a true freshman. Um, so we'll have to see how it goes. I, I love your insights, getting your insights on um, on the other teams in, in the Big Ten because I, I think you you look into it more than just about anybody else. What when when you when you look around, like what what you reference there? What do you what do you sort of take that's notable from things that are going on elsewhere right now around the Big Ten? It's a broad spectrum, right? So it's a broad survey that I kind of do on each team, and I read a little bit and I watch a bunch of preseason interviews and I watch kind of tape that I can watch. So I, I put, you know, three, four hours in each team. What I would say is, you know, just locally, I think Wisconsin is going to have issues again. I, I, I think they're going to be six and six, seven and five at best. I think Minnesota likes what they are but they've got to figure out their defense because it wasn't very good last year. And I don't know if it's good again, because I just don't know if PJ flex really hit on recruits. And I think the portal thing has been hard for them. I think Purdue is in a tough situation. I think they, yeah. I, they lost a lot of guys. Indiana lost a lot of guys. They're starting over. Uh, Northwestern could be interesting, uh, but you know, Nebraska doesn't face them this year. And so, We'll see. I, I think UCLA is going to have to get it done on offense. Their offense, their defense is going to is going to be put in the hurt locker by October. They're they're going to be in real real problem, real struggle, real pain, physical travel. UCLA's defense is going to really struggle against about what they're what they're going to go up against. Their offense could be quite good though. The question is, Eric the enemy, can he get it done? I don't know. He's their OC, and he, his interviews are twice as long as the head coach, and that doesn't seem mm. good, but that's what it is. 
Washington haven't delved into them too much yet. USC, I think, is going to be pretty good. I think Lincoln Riley has a quarterback who is not nearly as talented as the guy he just had, but is also nowhere near the distraction. And so the guy that he's got there is a little bit like, uh, you know, a Graham Harrell type. Like he's, he's a guy you're not going to know much about him, but I think he, he's going to be pretty good. And if their schedule wasn't ridiculous, which it is, they would be a contender. Um, the East Coast teams are probably going to be tough. You know, I mean, Maryland and Rutgers could both win seven or eight games. They're good enough to do it. They've got defensive players. they got talent. Um, Penn State's probably going to be very good. You know, they, James Franklin has switched offensive coordinators with the hopes that he's going to get an offense that could be more explosive than the one they had last year. So, you know, Ohio State and Oregon are the two best teams in the league. Michigan's completely rebuilding. Mm. It's gonna be it's gonna be a journey for that guy. He's you know their new coach is gonna probably win eight games this year if if that, and they'll just have to start over. And Michigan State's completely starting over too. So I think Nebraska is in decent shape. I mean I think they can win seven, eight, nine games, maybe even ten. Uh, doesn't mean they're gonna get anywhere with it. Doesn't mean they'll play for the Big Ten title. I think that's gonna be Ohio State and Oregon, maybe Penn State, but Nebraska can definitely be in the top third of the league, which is the top six. That'll uh that'll that'll be okay around here, that's for sure. Sam, appreciate it as always, my friend. Have a good week. Take care. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. What did he just say? I want to just make sure he got that right. Seven, eight, nine, or ten. Did I hear the number ten? Ten? The ten. Ten. Hey, look, man, I, I, I don't disagree with anything you just said. I, I like I think um you know it's it's obviously really, really difficult to predict Nebraska to win you know, you know, to double their win total from what they've been, basically, we're talking about four, you know, four or five more wins or whatever it might be. Like, it's hard to predict that. It's hard to say that. Um, and I think it's, that's part of rules approach. It's not necessarily just internally. It's also externally like, hey, man, we're just going to, we're just going to go to work. You know, we're, we're, we're going to go to work every single day and wherever it lands is wherever we land. Like, that's, that's it. Um, that's how you have to approach it. And the fact that they're not starting over and they have a good defense that's basically all coming back that they can, you know, hopefully take the next jump with. Sam wrote about um takeaways and turnover stuff this week um in his in his rewind. Um if they can make that leap, it's gonna be game changing. It's and because I already expect them, we, we talked about this plenty. I already expect them to be miles better on offense. We'll see what that ends up being. I don't, I, I don't know how good it's going to be. I don't know that it has to be very good. I think they can be middle of the road type of offense. Just don't bleep it up so much. And if your defense takes that next step, is as good as they were last year, and adds that disruptive element to it, sacks and turnovers. That's a recipe especially with the how light Nebraska's schedule is at the start. And then the back, I mean, if we're being honest, the back end doesn't look so horrible either. You think UCLA is going to be any good? I don't. I, do I, I sure as hell don't. Um, you know, USC might be okay. Ohio State's obviously going to be really good. And then it's Wisconsin and Iowa. Who says you can't beat them? So, I don't know. You can get really carried away if you if you – which we will. We got plenty of time to get carried away, Josh. Hell yeah. Plenty of time to get carried away. All right, coming back, uh, a couple more things to clean up, including a new trend in spring games. Ooh. College football's hottest club, hottest new club is <laughs> Old Miss Spring Game. Oh. We'll talk about it next on 1620 The Zone. But first, bet the NBA play-in tournament with a no-sweat same-game parlay from FanDuel. doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or if you already have an account. You'll get bonus bets back. If your same game parlay doesn't win on any Tuesday night matchup. That's right. NBA same game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payday. We look ahead to tomorrow night's play in games, Lakers, Pelicans, Warriors, Kings. How about a rematch in that from a uh, playoff series last year? Steph Curry's one of his last rides. We got LeBron James. There's plenty of things to bet on using the FanDuel Sportsbook. So cook yourself up a nice same-game parlay or however you want to play. Just head to FanDuel.com slash Happer. Bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay. 
FanDuel.com slash Happer. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the association. 21 and over, present in Iowa. Minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued is now withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. You get a lot of junk in your inbox. This one, not junk, not junk at all. 1620 The Email. Exclusive content, contests, other stuff probably. Subscribe today at 1620thezone.com. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Windy and very warm for your Monday afternoon with a high today in Omaha of 86 degrees. Gusts out of the southeast up to 30 miles an hour and a red flag warning in place for some parts of eastern Nebraska, western Iowa until 7 p.m. Overnight tonight and early Tuesday morning, a chance for scattered showers and storms with a slight to enhanced risk for severe weather. Windy, a low of 63. I'm meteorologist Caitlin Harvey with KUTV Newswatch 7. More with Connor and Josh after this. We're going to have an extensive professional relationship, my man. On 1620, The Zone. At Sid Dillon Chevrolet, we want you to have the best car buying experience possible. Shop Nebraska's number one volume Chevy dealer group or at SidDillonChevy.com. Together, let's drive. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. How powerful is Cox Fiber? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas... Phoenix, and Omaha. Jam like you're all in the same garage. Introducing Cox Fiber from the company with the fastest download speeds eight years in a row. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Limited availability in select areas. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Analysis by Ookla Speed Test Intelligence in Las Vegas, Omaha, Phoenix. Fixed media download speeds Q2 2016 to Q3 2023. The greatest American rock and roll band in history, Aerosmith. Present Peace Out, the Farewell Tour. Aerosmith, with special guest the Black Crows. CHI Health Center Omaha, Friday, November 15th. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. Aerosmith, with the Black Crows, the Farewell Tour. Peace Out. OSI Oakland is hiring maintenance mechanics for all shifts starting at $22.50 an hour with a retention bonus for all new hires. OSI Oakland offers great benefits including medical, dental, vision, and 401k, plus a retention bonus. Apply now at osigroup.com slash careers or at their plant Monday and Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Must have ID and wear closed toe and heeled shoes to enter the plant. OSI is an equal opportunity employer. Bonuses are subject to eligibility and program requirements the world's largest sports book in las vegas is available right at your fingertips in iowa the circus sports iowa app is sports betting the way it should be bet anywhere in iowa and experience high betting limits tight money line splits and exceptional customer service download your new bookie today visit circusports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in iowa if you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Here comes the clown. All right, college football's hottest nightclub is Ole Miss Spring Game. 
here's uh here's a couple of the things that happened at Ole Miss's spring game. Okay. Notice what none of these things are. Uh, Joey Chestnut eating hot dogs. Oh, wow. That happened at Ole Miss's spring game. What a get. Uh, Monty Kiffin got pushed in a golf cart race. Sororities competed in a tug of war championship. Um, a dunk contest, I believe. Like a slam dunk? Contest? Yes, yes, basketball dunk. Yes. Okay, yep. okay. Now, did you notice what none of those things were? Did the red team beat the blue team or whatever their colors are? Not not information that's available to me, Josh. Oh, wow. They okay. did play a little flag football, a little seven-on-seven seven flag football. But basically, Lane Kiffin turned his spring game into a carnival featuring Joey Chestnut, sorority girls, and slam dunks. And I kind of respect it. Yeah, what's the, I kind of respect it. What's the downside? Well, the downside is that you wasted a practice. I guess you but you only get fifteen of them in the spring. That's true. And you wasted one of those practices. And when they don't, you know, if they don't, now they're going to be one of the best teams in the country next year. But if if you're for some reason not, you know, if you're like a six and six team that's fighting your way to get to a bowl game, and all this, you fall one game short at the end, is like, well, you you only get fifteen of the damn practices, and you wasted one on Joey Chestnut hot dog eating contest. That would be the retort. But I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Now, I will say this: this is Lane Kiffin's brainchild. Lane, I don't want to know what else goes on in Lane Kiffin's brain if these are the things that happen in Lane Kiffin's brain. Scary place. We know a little bit about Lane Kiffin, and we also know a little bit about the. Uh, you know, he he he's got some equity there. He's had some success. They were very good last year. He's lost key guys. The port. He lost Quinchon Jenkins in the portal, and nobody cared. That's right. I mean, people love him down there. So, um, with that being said, it's a combination of that and the fact that he is at Ole Miss and the fact that they're going to be pretty good this year. I think Lane's in his bag right now, and he decided to let this one fly on Saturday. Don't know if you could really quite pull this off at a place like Nebraska that has this deep respect for football. Also, Matt Rule would not be the guy to do it. He would, he would not. He would no. definitely not be the guy to do it. But don't, I, I wouldn't, uh, like, uh, there's going to be some stupid stuff that happens in Nebraska spring game. There will be non-football related stuff, I think, that happens in Nebraska spring game. But there will be oh. football. There will be football. In this game, there was no football. Hmm. Thoughts? Are you in? I... Yes, I am in on this. It definitely is a better like outing for a, yes. for a Saturday. I would rather go to this than the practice. Mm -hmm. I would rather go to this than the practice. It'd and be kind of funny. I, I I think you nailed it when you said Lane Kiffin has found a window to yes. where he can execute this. He's in his bag. They were good last year. They're going to be good this year. He has stayed through several hiring cycles when it was rumored that he would not. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of almost revered down there right now. Like he's got, he's got a little bit of, a little bit of stroke to where he can go. You know what? Let's get weird. Uh, by the way, update on Joey Chestnut. Uh, his round of eating hot dogs uh, was cut a little bit short. He nearly choked to death. Oh God. He got a bun stuck in his throat. Now, if Joey Chestnut choked and died at the Ole Miss spring game, then it probably wouldn't fly anymore. Right, You'd right. You'd probably have to stop at that point. Let's go back to the game. It, don't mind the fact that Joey Jaws ate 20 hot dogs in 90 seconds before he started choking on a bun. It's a good pace. Um, it momentarily slowed down, but he was able to power through. But he... He what he wasn't going to set the world record that day. He slowed no. him down. He choked on the bun. He choked on a bun. Imagine if Joey Chestnut died at the old Miss <laughs> Spring game. 
I wow. w- would Lane Kiffin get fired? Do you think? No, mm. nah, I don't think so either. But it'd be a conversation. Somebody would say it on the chit chat shows. That's for yes, sure. Yes, yes. Somebody would definitely say it. All right. Uh, quick timeout. We'll come back if the poll questions tell you what to watch on the other side on sixteen twenty. The zone for the Jays, the Huskers, and even you, Jayskers. We are sixteen twenty. The, the zone. zone. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Like eating out? Like saving money? Then get to Cobb's at 180th and Center, Shadow Lake Town Center, or 72nd and Jones for their daily specials. Tuesday is $3 off all burgers and sandwiches. Wednesday, buy any specialty pizza and get a one-topping 50% off. Then Thursday, all wings are a dollar each when you order 10. And this just in, all Cops locations now offer their own delivery service. Click CopsPizza.com to see the menu. Cops pizza, and so much more. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. Email any of our shows anytime into the Equitable Bank inbox. At Equitable, we take banking personally. For me, John at 1620thezone.com. The Equitable Bank inbox from 1620 The Zone. Join the stations of The Zone this spring on our Road to the College World Series. Creighton Baseball is back from Charles Schwab Field. Our regular season schedule takes us all the way through the Big East Tournament. Creighton Baseball on 1620 The Zone and 1180 The Zone. Your Omaha Stockmen are kicking off their 10th season and have their home opener at Ralston Stadium on April 27th at 7 against their Heartland Football Association foe, the Newton Nighthawks. Their home opener is also their fourth annual Sammy's Superheroes Childhood Cancer Night. This has become a fan favorite night with kid captains and raffle items with a portion of ticket sales going directly to the foundation. The Omaha Stockmen home opener and Sammy's Superheroes Childhood Cancer Night, April 27th at 7 at Ralston Stadium. A uh, little reminder here from yours truly that this week's zone deal is to the Woodcliff restaurant. And stay tuned on Wednesday because we're going to have some opportunities to, for you to uh, win some coupons to the Woodcliff restaurant. It's, of course, voted Omaha's best outdoor patio, perfect for a romantic dinner for two or a family dinner. Uh, delicious food with perfect view of Woodcliff Lake. Don't miss this Thursday's weekly special burger or Friday's fish special with this week's zone deal. Of course, you get two $25 vouchers, which is, of course, a $50 value for just $25 on sale Friday at 9, 16, 20, the zone.com. Also, listen along because we'll be giving away gift certificates this week on the show. To the polls we go, Josh. Six of them today. Did you watch Tracker last night? I watched the end credits of Tracker and what was coming up on next week's Tracker. Oh, does next week's Tracker look good? Nope. Oh, man. It looked bad. Dang. I was hopeful. (laughs) I did not watch Tracker last night. It was pretty good. The one part I saw, like, the vision is flashing back into my head now. Um, It was, I don't, I have no idea what the show's about. Don't know what it's about like at all i'm gonna bet we're tracking some i'm making some assumptions based on it being called tracker Mm -hmm. and i thought to myself before i saw this i thought this seems like a type of show that two guys are facing off against each other but one of them's the cop and one of them's kind of a good guy but he's not the cop and the guy gets his gun out and he points it at the guy and instead of shooting him he 
pistol whips him. Yeah. That exact thing happened <laughs> in the 10 seconds that I was watching it. Sure, sure. Shut up! <laughs> you keep your mouth shut if you know what's good for you. <laughs> That's that happened in the 10 seconds that I watched Tracker. So yeah, I watched Tracker last night. Amazing. 94% said no. Hmm. Imagine that. I did not watch Tracker. Does beer taste better when your grass is green? Most voted on poll question of the day. No, it is not. Uh, yes, beer does taste better. Yes. 90% say yes. Are your friends actually the worst people? Yes. I wholeheartedly believe. I'm going to I'm going to vote yes. It's okay. It's it's all right. Mm -hmm. You get together, you do crazy stuff with your friends. 55% say yes. Do you think about the Black Hills? No, never. I do sometimes. 61% say no, but just 61%, Josh, which means 39, 40 say uh, yes, they do think about the Black Hills. Two more. Most voted on poll question of the day. Which do you think of when you hear AI? Allen Iverson or artificial intelligence? Good poll. I'm going to be honest. A lot of the time, I think of Allen Iverson. It started to transition to it, artificial it, intelligence yeah, for me. Yeah. Unfortunately, I want to vote AI just because I want it to. I want him to win. Is that okay? That's fine. I can do whatever I want. You vote me. however you want to vote. Thank you. Fifty-six percent say artificial intelligence. Mm, sad. And finally, can we laugh at Delano Banton for going 0 for 15 from three-point range last night? Yes. yes. Get a better sense of humor. Soft-ass audience. Thank you, audience. 85% say yes, we can. But that one guy doesn't think it's funny. <laughs> Those are the polls, Josh. What are we watching tonight? Uh, we're, of course, watching the WNBA draft tonight, 6.30 on ESPN. Who will go number one? Caitlin Clark. Yeah, it's going to uh, be her. Jazz Shelley projected to be a late second round pick. Oh, let's go, Jazz. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So there's uh, there's like an actual reason to tune in. Uh, NBA. How, how, how long will this draft last? It's what is the gap between Caitlin Clark time and Jazz Shelley time? I, it's two hours. I don't know how many rounds there are. Do they televise the whole two rounds? I don't I don't know. They could do two rounds of draft in two hours. I NFL, take notes. I don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. The format for the television portion of the program tonight. Okay. I'm sorry. Maybe Jazz will go number two overall, and mm -hmm. then I could turn it off. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, G League Finals, game three in a best of three series. It is the Oklahoma City Blue against the Maine Celtics, eight o'clock on ESPN. U. No takes there? None. None? Okay. Uh, ESPN has hockey after the WNBA draft, the Minnesota Wild, and the LA Kings at 8 30. Uh, baseball tonight, 635 start between the Twins and the Orioles. That's your MLB TV free game of the day. Braves Astros in Texas, 7 o'clock start on MLB Network. It's a clubhouse edition, so it's just a bunch of old ball players talking during the game. No real uh, format or play-by-play. -play. Totally normal. Uh, and then, of course, we uh, take you out to Chavez Ravine for the Dodgers hosting the Nationals at 9 o'clock on MLB Network on Jackie Robinson Day. Always uh, one of the one of the great checkpoints in uh, the baseball season. Jackie Robinson Day at Dodger Stadium. If you're more of a football guy, ESPN two has a three round mock draft tonight at six thirty. Nope. <laughs> Please kill me instead. Actually, <laughs> thanks. That was just for you, Connor. And eight o'clock tonight on CBS, the one thousandth episode of NCIS. As as NCIS comes under attack, Vance tries to mend fences with his estranged son. Which is more impressive? 100 Billy Joel's shows at Madison Square Garden or 1,000 NCIS episodes? 1,000 NCIS episodes. I think so, too. Yeah. I'm amazed. Just Good job, America. Yeah. You kept that thing afloat. Thanks, old people, for not turning off the TV after your late local news. Uh, good question from Matt on YouTube before we go oh, here. Hi, Matt. Uh, will they draft anyone during a Chalupa commercial like Jokic? Great question. I would imagine so. Will somebody get drafted? I believe it was a Quesarito. Mm -hmm. uh, will anybody get drafted during a Taco Bell commercial in the WNBA draft tonight and then become an all-time great player? I don't Tune know. Tune in to I, find out. I don't know about that second part, but I feel like that first part is plausible. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, Connor. That's what we're watching. That's the show. If you miss anything, 1620thezone.com is where you can find it. The crossover is next. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, 
This is 1620 The Zone. Are Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is and has always been locally owned and operated. Now, with 160 employee owners, chances are one of us lives in your neighborhood. We take pride in taking care of you, our customers, and keeping you comfortable all year round. And as always, our technicians don't have sales quotas. When other companies send salespeople, Standard Sense Qualified Technicians is just part of... Carrier, turn to the experts. I have never seen this before. Hi, John with Sol's Jury and Loan. The price of gold is the highest it's ever been. Now is the time to get the best price on your broken jewelry, chains, and diamond jewelry. Saul's has been around a while, and trust us, now's the time. Saul's Jury and Loan. 